Good evening. It's 7 o'clock. If you have a quorum, we'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is David Phil from the Municipal Building Committee. Well, I'm here because uh, the committee is proposing a parking lot on the Russ School property. And here's a drawing of it. And what we're asking tonight is just for any feedback. Um, it's approximately 28 spaces. Uh, right now the thought is, the way the parking is, is very dangerous backing out of those uh, slots onto Middle Street. And uh, what they're proposing to do is have the whole parking lot within town boundaries, nothing on the state property. There'll be uh, a green strip separating Mill Street from the parking lot. The entrance would be from the uh, access road going by Russell School down to Hopkins. Um, and it's basically for parking for the town hall meetings, um, town meetings at Hopkins, wherever. Um, and it's just a look forward and for safety is the thought of the committee. And you know, we realize we have to go through the zoning board of appeals before this board, but um, our committee wanted me to come and just run it past you guys for any comments or, well, or what? My first comment was, what's going to happen to Russell School? Um, undetermined at this point. Um, so. You are limiting your options now by taking some parking for that. I, I would rather see a overall plan, say that if we sell Russell School or demolish Russell School, it's a different story. So if we do take away some of the parking, then you limit the ability to sell it. And uh, what? So it, it definitely is making limitations on what you can do. And that, that all came up in our meeting. Um, it was a back and forth, well, it was an estimate of 22 to 20, 22, $23 million at this point to bring that building up to uh, working order. Well, that means they have a plan for it? If uh, it's just, it's a rough estimate. Um, and 22 to 23 million? Yeah. Yep. Very, yeah. And, I, and so, I think at this point, there was thought, do they bring it to town meeting and ask people for um, their thoughts on, do we sell it, do we keep it? It's a historical building. It's one of the nicest looking buildings in the center of town. Um, so that's all up in the air. If it was to be sold, there would be restrictions probably on the uh, keeping it looking the same. Um, along with, of course, you need addition for elevator space and whatnot. But, um, then they would keep the right of that parking lot for the town. And yes, is it going to take away some value? Yeah, but this is this is all in a very beginning process. I mean, it, as far as providing additional parking for for Hopkins and for the town hall, it's sorely needed, yeah. and it's it's definitely a safer way than it is right now. Um, how many accidents are there out there? Is there a lot of them, or I don't probably very few. I, I don't I couldn't tell you if there was one or not. You know, yeah. I don't know. It is it is uh, a bad place to back out. When I'm parked there now, I always try to back in, yeah. especially in the evening when it's hard to see. So. Well, I so I've kind of given my my speech uh, and. Towns do not do well in managing real estate, and this has been on the study for probably 15 years, and the cost of repairing it always goes up and up and up every time somebody gives an estimate. And a little anecdotal information, when Sunderland sold the town hall to the Blue Heron for a dollar, people were all upset. Well, it proved out to be a good move because they don't, it's not on the tax roll, you don't have to take care of it, and uh, and the same thing with the center school in Hatfield. Uh, I think we've got to make a decision on what to do with Russell School before we start stealing some parking that may be necessary 
or part of the, uh, the, the sale process? Well, I, I don't think it's necessarily a permanent decision. Uh, oh, well. Parking it, lots are pretty permanent. <coughs> for the next 15 years, while we continue to figure out what to do with the school, we at least have the parking there. <laughs> well, okay. Back when the elementary school building committee looked at reusing Russell School. One of the reasons Russell School is, I mean, for, there's two reasons for the expense. One is prevailing wage and what's required under state. So that, that raised the cost of anything by some percent. But Russell School is a built on stone. It is a two and a half story building. It needs to meet, need, needs to meet earthquake resistance for the zone that it's in. The only way it can be made earthquake resistant, and this is the building code, not, I'm not speaking out of turn, I'm not blowing smoke, this is the facts. It needs to be made earthquake resistant up to a certain uh, value. The only way that can be done is to steel reinforce the building from, the, from below grade all the way up to the top of the building to the roof. That's where the a major expense comes in because there's no easy way to do that. There's no it's all old timber and it's, it's not even concrete, it's built on stone. If that thing ever saw an earthquake, it would, earthquake, it would crumble like a, like a tin house. I mean like a toothpick actually, because there's nothing holding it together. So you're saying that they should take it down? I didn't say that. I'm simply giving some of the facts of why it costs so much for it to be made, to be brought up the building code. I mean, a contractor could obviously do it for less than that, but they still have to do the same work and is going to be significant, um, no matter who does it. The town, I said, any town or state agency is prevailing wage. If it's a private, sold to a private developer, they've got to make it the same, but it'd be a, you know, a less, because they would have to pay the prevailing wage. That's it. So, so from a zoning perspective, the one thought that I have uh, is, uh, we don't. We usually discourage parking and setbacks. Uh, it's not a mandatory requirement, but when we are talking with a business applicant in here, we want no parking in the 50-foot front yard setback. This is sort of the side yard setback, although it does get into the front yard setback. Um, so that would be a, a an issue of concern. Um, and that, that was one of the things we'd have to go with. Zoning Board of Appeals to get that granted? Not, well, well, no, uh, we have waiver authority we within site plan it. approval. Now, what, what, is the, what is the right of way on Middle Street right here, Dave, do you know? It's, it's more than 50 feet like a standard road. It's the, it's the, it's the much wider. Yeah, I, I don't know. What, what they did say is the whole proposed parking lot was in the town right of way. Okay. Granted, the street right of way combined with Russell School. So it's all I understand that, yeah. but does it, is the right of way down Middle Street to the sidewalks on outside all is that is that pretty, pretty much yes yeah so the the, the right of way here or the width of the street is much different than a standard right of way on a side street it's it's like probably a hundred feet wide as opposed to fifty feet on a normal road because the sidewalks on both sides of Middle Street here. Or, yeah, Middle Street are in the town right of way, so it's a very, it's, it, very, it's very wide. Yeah. Most of the houses on Middle Street are only set off 15 feet from the right of way because of that. So to say that you couldn't park on a right of way on Middle Street or right there would be pretty restrictive. Pretty, yeah, it, it would be overly restrictive. Like at my house, you know, it goes right to the lamppost, which is 10 feet. Door. Yeah. And the whole front lawn belongs to the town. Floodplain level is no. oh, how high? This is, out of front, this is out of the floodplain. So how, how many feet out of the floodplain? I, I don't have that information. I think uh, the ball field behind it is flood storage. Is it was dug out? There's a marker on the west side yeah. building yeah. there that will tell you exactly, I, I believe. The, 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 the brass marker. It's like 113 feet. No. The height? It's 125. It's 125 is the floodplain. The marker on a corner of Russell School is way above 125. Above the sea level? Yeah. Yes. Millie Fleetwood took us and showed us to us. I'll bet you 100 bucks it's not more than 125. 
Yeah. The uh, anyway, you're on. In fact, I go there and look once in a while to make sure I wasn't imagining that period of my life when she took us around. Okay. <laughs> it's still there. Um, I mean, I personally think that it's an appropriate use to get the parking and make some add additional parking and get it out of so close to Middle Street. What does the, what does the rest of the board feel about it? Yeah, I think it's a right. definitely a problem that needs a solution. Yeah, and if what you say is correct, and I have no reason to doubt you about having to make it earthquake resistant, then no developer in his right mind would do it because the rents of that building would never cover the cost. Yeah, so so. You're, you're kind of in a quandary here. It sounds like this building is either going to deteriorate like the North Alley Hall has, or you're going to take it down now. Who's going to develop that? Who? Why? Yeah. Good place for a law office. <laughs> Not if you have to spend $25 million to <laughs> open your doors. That's a lot of kids. Your comments, Mark? Mm -hmm. No, I think it's, it's an improvement. Um, I'm not, Joe, were you saying it would lose parking? It looks like it would increase parking, no? But the, the building, that's going to be the town. Well, the town, the town is usurping the parking, so if somebody were a, a potential developer mm -hmm. and uh, right. they would, oh, there's yeah. not enough parking to go with that building, so yeah. you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot for one of the options of that piece of property. Or you turn the parking lot over to the developer. You think that would happen? No. As part well, of that's the, why they want it in the first place. Yeah. It'll never happen. Well, it, it could be a combination, but but again, uh, you know, I'm not here to discuss Russell School, so to say, because I guess if this conversation has been going on for years already. What they're going to do with it? They're going to save it, not sell it, knock it down, whatever. Um, it's a very nice building. I hate to see it knocked down. I'd also hate to have my tax rate jump up for that 23 million. But that's my personal opinion. But we're here just to, um, you know, I guess get some feedback from you guys so I can bring it back to the Municipal Building Committee to see what the thought is. I would say the overall comment of the, of the Planning Board is that, you know, the, 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 we think it's a good idea. Even Joe has concerns about it, but is it still an improvement? But can, we, can we use this to force the issue on Russell School? I mean, if you don't do something this year, Give us a plan, and we're going to move forward with this. Uh, this and it's going to make, make it a less attractive building and for the developer. I'm not sure of this. I, there's been talk about bringing the question to Fall Town Meeting. I'm not sure if it's going to come up or not. It's just been talked to the group. Um, should we? Um, because, let's face it, the longer that thing sits empty, the more it deteriorates the more you're going to have to put money into it just to keep it standing. Um, so, you know, realistically, the town ought to just figure it out and do something. But you know, that's not up to me or you guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the well, the selectmen have that authority, so I have to put on a warrant, but not to sell it outright or, get, or demolish it. Yeah. What's that first paragraph we get at the town meeting all the time? They have the control over the property? Up to a certain value. I didn't read the value, but well, okay. I think I think that I think there's a value on that, but I'm not positive. Anyways, okay. So I think you kind of got the opinion that what you're yeah. what's being proposed is a good idea. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Shannon Rice. Yep. I was here last week uh, purchasing um, 10 Rocky Hill Road, but we just wanted to seek clarification because um, you guys gave me sage advice to look at the law regarding. Um, so it's page three, four. I only brought four copies. Shannon called me the other day, and there's, there's a clause in the state thing about growing on site. And she wanted to know what the 20% means of growing on site meant. On site means. I kind of gave her my interpretation, but I said you need to come to the planning board and get the opinion of everybody as opposed to just one person. Sounds like some towns say take it very literally and say on site, and some of them say it's on farm. And because a lot of farms, we um, in the very nature of rotation of crops, um, we rent or lease or own various pieces of land. So we're to say 25% of my total crops carry year to year, just like any other farm in the valley. So um, we would just 
trying to see how Hadley's interpreting this. Is it literal or is it on farm with the brackets uh, on, in I, Hadley? I, I, gave her the, I gave her the opinion that as opposed to literally on site of land adjoining the farm stand, we have kind of been loosely interpreting that because it's the first time it's really come up to be that, is that as long as it's grown on that farm the within farm. within the town, then that's what we I determine my my opinion of on site means. Ninety five percent of my farmland's on Bay Road and two different parcels. So I mean even except for Cooks, the Cook property, Barstow doesn't have fit twenty percent on site. Theirs is surrounding it, but it's literally not adjoining their farm stand. And the same thing with uh Boysburg. So 25% on the land on which the facility is located or So this would be, we're trying to look for a retail front and the land that I have is not suitable for that so we're looking at specifically purchasing so we can actually have a retail front for our farm. So the like we said on site is and each town apparently is interpreting this differently, and um, this state said I had to seek what Hadley, how Hadley interprets Oh, how many acres you got over there? How much do I rent total? Uh, no, how much do you have around? It's 1.41 acres. And it's, it would be, we would be doing almost exactly the same thing that had been done before by yeah. the previous owner, Bill Benedict, but we would be, um, like I said, most of my land is on Bay Road. We'd meet and exceed very much the um, What What's the address? What, what address? 10 Rocky Hill. 10 Rocky Hill. And for the most part, our rent, 241 Bay Road, I share with um, Joseph here. I'm going to give you a primer on for not some poor slot points. The only biggest achievements graduating high school is learning to spell them all. <laughs> Last, last time you heard of 51% of the bodies so, is going to be from your so farm. How did you get come up with that number? So APR as well as um, FSA use 51-49% rule. So that basically um, when we were just, because we, it was actually rather difficult and we had a couple people trying to look for this specific statute um, who work in land use, ironically. Oh. I did find this um, finally. Here, I'll give you. But I just wanted to see the number. And it's on page three and four, and I tried to use my paragraph two. And again, when we were um, we spoke to lawyers for MDAR, which basically said it's, um, they can't do anything because it's zoning. And again, um, different land use lawyers that I spoke to also said it's by the town, and they do interpret it in three different ways, actually. On-site as very literal. On-site the town that you're in, if you have the farm in the town, or... Um, you know, just a general more, it's just your farm. You can have it like all over the country and all the region. So this kind of determines my funding and how we open, so. So is everybody kind of in agreement that on-site yeah. means on-farm? Exactly. Uh, I'm not. Well, you can debate it until the cows come home. No pun intended. Well, so one interpretation is that 25% uh, it's, it's a very poorly written statute. Yes, it, it's uh, trying to put, trying to create a verbal formula is very awkward. Um, so I, one way to read it is that 25% of the products for sale have been produced by the owner of the farm stand. Correct. No, and uh, that does not necessarily mean on the land of the farm stand. Right. So they've 25 percent have been produced by the owner of the farm stand. It doesn't have uh, to be And uh, so, if you want to qualify for the agricultural exemption as opposed to being a grocer, you have to. You have to produce at least 25% of the product. As the farmer, yes. Um, 
which we will do. Well done. So, um, gross sale previously the owner. So if you did have a bigger farm there and you could grow the 25% on the site, that would be easy. But I don't see that it requires that it be grown on the site. It, uh, yeah, it's just produced by the owner. Produ uh, yeah. And then that's a follow-on clause describing the owner of what. I, I, yeah. I, I, I don't read it as it has to be produced on that exact plot of land. And like I said, Avery Town has interpreted it differently, which is why I'm seeking and at least an additional 50% uh, products for sale have been produced in Massachusetts. Um, and you know, it's interesting the way they express it as gross annual sales or annual volume. Um, so um, depending on how, if you, um, you can do, you can move a big volume of potatoes if you sell them one by one. <laughs> Very well. Um, or isn't it the same volume? Oh, well, well, yeah. yeah well, annual well. volume. You, you know, you, you either sell a 50 pound bag of potatoes or you sell 350 yeah, but, potatoes. But, 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 yeah, but it's still a, a, a total. So, yeah. As a retailer, yeah. you're better off selling one potato at a time than. Well, yeah, that's what I'm time. saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gross annual sales or annual volume. So. so um, either way you interpret it. It just been brought up that town, each town yep. in Massachusetts yep. has been interpreting this differently, and so I just wanted well, to... Well, if this is okay. challenged, our decision, either way, then they're yep. going to rely, look at the statute yep. as a means of challenge, but challenging you. And for the purpose of this lady, I'll make a motion that a determination of on-site equals products produced by the farm. Does that mean... Do I'll second it for the purpose they, of discussion. Do they have to be grown from the soil, or can they be brought in and changed? Produced, okay. produced on the farm. Does this mean? How, just what what is this? The the does this say grown? That site, but could include other uh, land products there. for sale have been produced. Okay, so we're going to use the word produced. Okay, but produced doesn't necessarily mean grown from the soil. I guess something could be in, could be brought in yeah. and altered. Yeah. And you, resold. you could be. Yeah. Uh, they also have yeah. vit, vinic. Yeah. 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 So we have the viticulture, uh, horticulture, uh, floriculture. You know, you could be uh, growing flowers and then selling bouquets. Right. Oh. Right. So, Jim, what was your motion? I was that. that it, a requested a determination of on-site and the planning board is do well, without I'm gonna, not going to put all those words in there but according to this form um, Shannon Rice requested a determination of on-site and we are determined that products so on-site means products produced by the farm farm okay let's not let's not even use on-site because that is not oh, that's, that is not the term in here. What is it? What is the term they're using? Uh, the primary corrosion land. The twenty-five percent limitation. Land on which the facility is produced. Land, okay, produced by the owner. No, determine um, products produced. No, what is the exact words? Produced by the owner or, or lessee. lessee of the land. Land on which the facility is located. That land the facility on is located is actually the farm stand itself, which is what which to. the facility. But it's the owner of the land. It doesn't say the food is located. is located. That's a limiting phrase. Okay. That's a that's a that's a direct quote from this. Land on which the facility is located equals products. Produced by the farm. Okay. Okay. How about the land? Uh, that land on which the facility is located does not require 
all products. I read it as your farm could own multiple parcels in town. You have to sell on one of those parcels. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be produced on that parcel. It could be any. Right, one all of your parcels. That's what that's, right. that's what I'm trying to get across. Yeah. The products produced by the farm. Okay, right. so how about this one? That uh, it's, it's land produced by the owner. Land on which the facility is located, quote unquote, does not require products to be raised on that particular parcel. Okay. Start rewriting that one again. Okay. Now, you understand, of course, if we're wrong, or should I say if someone appeals and a court decides otherwise. Correct. Yeah, we're We've already started the process of actually getting this uh, cleaned up a little bit for better language. Because so. it apparently has been brought up many times on other times. We're all set? No. Not yet. Land in which the facility is located does not. Not require products to be. Does not solely require products to be. Produced on that particular parcel. Okay, was it again, Bill? Okay, quote land on which facility is located, unquote, yes. does not require products, does not solely require products to be produced on that particular parcel. But on the parcel that you own. I don't think we have to go there because I think it, they're pretty much talking about the owner or lessee of the land on which the facility is located. So it does not solely require product to be produced on that parcel. Yes, on that particular parcel. Okay. And that gives her leeway to produce um, land that's not necessarily in Hallett, correct? Correct. As, yeah, as long as it's in Massachusetts. Yeah, right. Exactly. Good, um, good. Right. But the uh, the other part, the fifty percent is in Massachusetts is, is purchasing from others. Right. Um, Okay. Small and minor, it's like, is it like process? So I will modify my motion to say they request a determination of land on which, quote unquote, land on which the facility is located, unquote, does equals does not requ solely require products to be produced on that particular parcel. Okay. That is a motion with a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is. Can I have one of those? I will give it, I'll give this to the building inspector so he'll have it as a record and we'll have a record. And then uh, if you want to have a record, it'll be in, I'll put an extra copy in a planning board mailbox downstairs so you can have get it for tomorrow or something. Or if you want to wait around tonight, but that'll be a while. Thank you. You're I welcome. appreciate your help, guys. Mark Krauss. Hello. Mark Krauss for 97 Rose Street. Um, I am following up with the previous meeting where Randy Eiser was here in regards to our parking and uh, Steve Lewis Subaru ran oh, yes. part of our building. Yeah. So I have the uh, parking plans drawn up. Um, would you like to see them? Sure. All right. <coughs> It allows us for 61 spaces. Sorry. Should more than satisfy our needs. And the 10 that is being requested by Steve Lewis.
this the S1 thing? Uh, S1, S1, S1 is over here. S97, I saw it, and yeah, S1 is over there. So you own Esalon, correct? I own the business, yes. Yes, you own the business, okay. Yes. So this will get you off of the town common? Uh, this, along with some carefully created signs, will get people, customers, off the common. Yep. I will do everything in my power to make sure that people are aware that there is additional parking available. So... This is the total build out. What's the square footage of this building, of the entire building? Uh, 6,600 square feet. So, usually there's a, uh, Randy writes a amount of building space, amount of parking space, and the percentage thereof. Uh, but. Uh, so you're asking us to kind of calculate all the spaces in. Yeah, sorry, or is this just I ju is this just for Subaru or is this for your total build out? This is what that, we were looking for. This is this would um, we're really not building anything out, so it's a current use. So Steve Lewis is moving in there and using it as the, as it was used before. Perhaps you you didn't understand or Randy didn't convey it to you very clearly, we wanted the total square footage of the building that you're going to be utilizing for future rents or whatever you're going to do with it, and then the total amount of parking place places, and how will that qualify for the two for one. Building is going to remain, so that will be counted as building, uh, that garage. Uh, that garage is going to stay? Um, we're currently using it as it was used as for storage. Really? That thing is... So, so you're taking up, for that garage there, that's costing you a lot of parking. And then, once again, you've got the parking abutted right to your property. I mean, it's supposed to be 50 feet back. Mm -hmm. And you're asking for not only a minor concession, a huge concession. There, if at least you put some green space between there, yeah, to have it parking almost on Route 9 is, and if they want to come in with sidewalks, you're going to lose all that space. They're not going to be doing anything on this well, stretch at, at the moment. But at the moment. Exactly. So when we, when we permitted Esalon, which had developed as a commercial space with parking in the front, mm -hmm. and because it was a tight lot, we waived the no parking in the 50-foot front yard setback because it was already a parking lot. Although we did ask that there be planters to delineate it a little bit. Um, and you were not the original owner. I was not. Okay. Um, the difference here is this is, an, this is creating new spaces that didn't previously exist. Actually, um, I've been at Esalen for 11 years, and I believe at one time there was several cars. All, there might, might have been the several. I just don't remember. There were ever 18 cars, yeah. room for 18 cars along Route 9 there. And there were also in, in the back. Well, right. The back right. Here, that would here. be fine because they were, that's out of the 50 yeah. foot front yard setback, um, out of sight, out of mind. Um, Yeah, I think I would echo we'd like to, I, I thought we had explained ourselves more clearly that we wanted to, the, squ the square footage more than just the, uh, the 2,000, but the whole, the whole shooting match. So you said the whole, uh, how big is the whole building? 6,600 square feet. So 13,000 square feet of parking required for that? I think you have it. Uh, yeah, it well, you've got to add the, the other building. Months into that yeah we're just trying to make use of the building as it has been used for many many years yeah and one of the things that we ask for is that well I personally don't like to see a, a sea of blacktop 
without any plantings, and this is a sea of blacktop. It's got to be some delineation with trees or shrubbery or islands or something like that. Uh, we, just, we just approved the Northern Avenue garage, and we asked for greenery along Cummins Road, mm -hmm. 47 there, just so there was some barrier, so I mean, people where something begins and where it ends, which I don't think was unreasonable. I think it, for this, there's always been um, the lot, it's always gone up to the curb. With Same the with the line. North Alley Garage. Okay. Same and with the North Alley Garage. So we have a lot of green space um, on the, the side in the back. So there's green space. Yeah. Um, okay, parking. Several mm -hmm. feet here and here. Yeah. So. Delineated on this, so it's hard to say. When's the last time cars were worked on in that garage? Uh, well, so according to the assessor's record, the uh, lot is 44,000 square feet, which is just over an acre. And I'm sorry, I. Uh, What's an average size parking place? 8 by 10? Nine by eighteen. Nine by eighteen. So. Yeah, but we, we never have counted it that no, way. But no, but we're, we're figuring out. Um, so, but forty-four thousand is the lot and uh, you, the building. I'm sorry, if you said what it was. Sixty-six hundred. Sixty-six hundred. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. To add in this, but let's add. A, let's call that another thousand square feet. Okay. So. Very quick calculation. Seventy-six. Excluding the eighteen spaces in front, and just using. This parking space with, with aisles, and these spaces with aisles, there's roughly 13,000 square feet. That's a real rough calculation. So he's very close to what he needs. There shouldn't be any problem okay. if you start feeling walk around, you know. I think adding the extra spaces is desirable because yes. um, it will relieve the Esalon overflow. Um, so I think that, yes, I do think there needs to be, we just can't have people driving out into, at, at there, there, there needs to be something, right now, this is, this is just, there's nothing here. Well, there's a curb cut over here that we intend to block off, actually, so there, it's a, Yeah, but it's what, what I'm saying is there's not much of a curb, is, is there a curb there? There is, yeah, there's the, the state curb, you know, double-sided. If you could put in some kind of a grass strip, even if it's just two or three feet, mm -hmm. five feet, so that people know that they can't drive out there. I, two feet? I, I think it's going to be a little bit, well, a little bit more. And the fact is, I think there has to be a, a direct delineation of where the curb cuts are going to be, and the state has to approve it because. We made a little bit of an oversight as well as the fire department an oversight with the dental building. The curb cut was not wide enough for egress of a fire truck. Remember what M Michael was telling us? Right. Well, there was two things there. There was the radius was within the parking lot and there was and that. Correct. So where is your curb cut? Yeah, we, we need a better plan. Okay, no, I, uh, th th this is Randy, exactly like, you know, need. right now, where are the curb was going to be to get, a, to get access to the building? Um, right now, there's, there, there's none shown. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, okay there's none shown. Yeah. So we don't know how Perfect. big, how wide, or where they're going mm -hmm. to be. So we need, we need, we need, we need something that shows, you know, something, some kind of a delineation that they, people won't drive straight out onto Route 9. And where the curb, where are the curb cuts going to be, and how wide are they to make sure that emergency vehicles and fire trucks can get access to this building? Are they going to, are they going to stay in front? You know, just to explain if they're going to be the, right now, pretty much the front of the building is wide open to the street. Right. 
if they're going to be that way in the state and it stays that way, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But just show them on a plan so that we know what we're approving. And because this plan is a bit incomplete. You may trigger mass highway requirements by, they may consider this a change of use. Um, so you'll need, you'll, you'll I think you really need to be in touch with Mass Highway about whether and to what extent they will let you keep your curb cuts the way they are laid out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that is, the state has the, has the, the okay on that. We have nothing to say on curb cuts on, on Route so 9. Like blocking off a curb cut? To be, totally out of our jurisdiction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The state may like that. Yeah, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not going to dispute, but Bill's right. You need to you, you need to talk to the state and over in, in, in the uh, DPWR in Northampton to find out what they want, what they what they're okay. They may say okay, you're no big deal, but they may also say a whole lot different. So I'm a hundred percent for bettering the parking um, the way it is at Eslon. Um, would the board consider? Uh, approving the use of, of the side of the building for Steve Lewis, which will only use 10 spots, which is part of my lease that we've drawn up for them. So, which is actually the same use that was being used before. So, they have We've done that, that before they've... in it, we've been burned. That's why we initially asked for a build out. Uh -huh. Conceptual build out with a little bit more detail because then you start adding things, adding things, and then we have no control. What are, what are your plans for the portion of the building that's not leased out? Uh, it's just currently being used uh, for storage. storage. Yeah. So, you know, we, we would really appreciate, you know, consideration for Steve Lewis with 10 spots which is actually a smaller amount than they would need for that. And that's something I'm going to enforce when we can come back in two weeks. How long have you owned, how long have you owned Eslon? I've owned Eslon for 11 years. 11 years? Yeah. And I've owned this building for just over a year. So, and I found tenants that yeah. could utilize the space and use a small amount of parking and, 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 you know, I haven't been on this board that long, five years or so, six years, but... There, there was a problem that developed with us a lot. So you've got a history of not parking where you're supposed to park. So when you say, can we bend a little bit, we, we kind of remember what's happened. I guess I'm not yeah. asking you to bend for Esalon. I'm asking you to bend for this building so we can actually have the business operation and utilize the building for what it's been used for for as far as I know, 50-something years. So if we, if we allow that, then the problem with Esalon parking could go on in perpetuity. I have no interest in sharing that. I, I live on the common myself yeah. with my very young family, and I would like to better the common. I think it's a wonderful place. Well, on, one, on the one hand, uh, giving Steve Lewis Subaru the opportunity to proceed doesn't make the problem any worse. The True. other hand is that if we don't shoot for a global solution, we're not sure when we'll get a solution. Well, I can guarantee you that I will be back here, either myself or Randy Heiser will be back here next time with a very definitive plan laid out. So we'll actually be able to see. So what, what is that. the term of the lease that you're negotiating? Lewis? Yes. One uh, year, two years, five three years, years, three. Mm -hmm. I think if when would you be back realistically, knowing you to go talk to state about the curb cuts? I'm not one that normally talks to state, so I don't know how that normally goes. But I, like I said, I would hope to be back here in two weeks with a definitive plan. So I am in, have no interest in carrying this on any longer. The amazing okay. thing so, is this needs a site plan, and it should go through the procedures of a site plan. It should. Um, but 
It's also pre-existing. It, pre-existing non-conforming use granted, but the... Uh, well, it's not a non-conforming use. It's well, a, it's it a, is a conforming use. It's an allowed use. Loose use. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Dunn, what's your opinion? I have a number of questions. I, I don't have all the history on, on this, and I would like to see where this is to the street um, curbs. I'm not sure how it's being used now and how the uh, Steve Lewis lease would change it. Um, I like the idea of the, Ste of the Steve Lewis uh, approval giving leverage to get this resolved, but I don't know. I don't want to extend beyond our... Yeah, we, we don't want to be punitive, no. but, but we also know that we've got a responsibility. Yeah. Tell you what, I mean, two, weeks, two weeks won't kill you. Come back in two weeks with an updated plan. If you go to the state and find out that you have all kinds of issues that's going to take longer than that, then we'll have a good... We'll have at least... You're, you're working as hard as you can, and through no fault of your own, you can't complete this. You can't complete this. Okay. Um, yeah, I can just say that if I'm not back here, I probably lost my potential tenant. So then I will be back here in months where I can find a similar tenant. So, so or years. So asking for to let Steve Lewis Subaru use part of it for automotive purposes, which is what it has been used for, no exterior alterations, that does not require, that's waivable. That does not require oh, yeah, site right. plan approval. That's absolutely true. Um, I think laying out um, however many parking spaces this comes to is a big enough change that would that would trigger site plan approval. I think if we were going to do it as a global solution, that does require site plan approval, which takes longer. This, yeah, where's the runoff going to go? I mean, this is going to be a sea well, of blacktop there. Well, no yeah, trees. so that's, that's, the, that. that's the design. So the question is whether we can just, you know, we, we have his attention now. Um, and, and you know, once the, they start putting up the no parking signs on the common, you'll have an incentive to, uh, uh, once they it, start who, towing. Who's going to put up the no parking signs? You are, correct? Um, I don't believe I have jurisdiction. No, it, it has to be the select no board. Parking on the common. Yeah, well, but, but you can request a select board approval to do that. I could, and I can also, like I said, I can do in my best responsibility, put up signs to tell people to park everywhere else, so uh, in our lots. Well, I want to be honest with you. Nobody has more control of people parking on the common for your business than you. I've said that before. If, no, if anybody has authority to stop them, you do. You have this parcel that you can use and your parcel existing. So to say that you may not be able to do that to me is total baloney because you own the available facilities to get the parking off of the common. Yes, you may have to go to the Board of Selectmen and request permission to put up some no parking signs. Maybe they deny it. Okay, so be it. However, somehow you need to make the effort to ensure parking is not on the common. I'm not a designer. I don't know how you're going to do that. You, I'm not picking on you. Esalon created a problem of parking on a common. Esalon has to be able to solve that problem because now they have available parking to do that. So and I, I just want to, I, I, in everything, in all my power, I will put up signs and make sure that people park in our lots. So, um, but... I am going to ask the board again for to approve. Yeah, but the before use of Steve right. Lewis well, Super before Super before, before yeah. you send people over here, you have to get this approved with the drainage and right, all of that. Right, right. So, um, and we you're not ready for that. Is, I also realize the parking is not going to be solved in a couple of weeks. Okay. Right. No matter what happens, it's going to take a little bit of time. Well, is it going to sign the lease as of August first? 
Uh, one, as far as I know, yes, we haven't gotten to that stage yet. So you said you're going to lose a tenant. I could potentially mm -hmm. lose a tenant, yes. And like I said, I found this particular tenant because mm -hmm. he only needs 10 spots maximum. Yeah. Every other tenant that's going to want 2,200 square feet is going to want many more parking places, so which would limit my use of the lot. So I'd like to see it get back in operation, get cleaned up. Um, yeah, and, and, and with the parking area, you've got to put some landscaping in there. What well, is that, it going well, to look that, like? Wait, that, that's a whole different thing. No, that's but further, that's no, wait further minute, wait minute, wait It will make a difference, though, Jim, because the way it's laid out now, Joe, you're counting spaces and you say it's enough. Wait a minute. But wait it's not going to fit into the ultimate design. We're talking two different things here. We're talking developing this the way he's got something along the line, the way he's got it laid out, versus giving him approval for Steve Lewis for this part of it for 2,000 square feet and 10 parking spaces. Well, my answer to Steve Lewis, and someone told me this once when I wanted to expand my office, there wasn't quite enough room, and I was in the earth position, and they said, from a time efficiency point of view, have you ever heard of expanding time instead of space? To Steve Lewis, you can work longer hours at your present site. You don't have to have that for all these recalls that he was talking about. So there is an answer to them as opposed to kind of asking us to make the concession. Um, okay. Good enough thing enough I said. Could go back to Steve Lewis, who's a successful businessman, and tell him that he needs to change the way he's doing business at his current location. So, what is the corporate name of Steve Lewis? Steve Lewis, Inc. LLC. Inc. So, are you representing Steve Lewis tonight? I am. Is this a deal killer? Uh -huh. Maybe. Well, well if he doesn't get approval, it is. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. certainly not going to stay open. No, no, no. I know I wasn't asking you to work longer hours. Well, that's if this if this is drawn out for two weeks, is it a deal killer for this gentleman? I can't answer that. That's just people's question. Well, you know, Esalon, by the way, just an editorial comment on behalf of Esalon, you made Hadley a destination for lunch. Thank you. Okay, you really did. And people say, where are you going to? Let's go to Esalon. So, you, you know, it's, it's, you've done a great job. You got a motion that you work on? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll make a motion to waive site plan approval for the lease of 2,000 square feet in existing structure to Steve Lewis Subaru, Inc., using up to 10 parking spaces with no sales or repair customers allowed on site. And that will be limited, it'll be unique to Steve Lewis Subaru Incorporated. If you, when he leaves, you can't just turn it over to someone else. Well, a second, I'll second it. And does, what about returning for further determination, anything? Well, I, that's, that's critical. I thought that's what we almost were all up agree upon. So this motion was well, this a little is, bit contrary to what our is, discussion was when we were working it, up to. Basically, this is limited to one, one tenant. Bill, we've been through that before. You yep. know very well. And then you lose your leverage. You lose the ability to really follow the letter of our site plan. And we will ask the select board to put up no parking signs. Um, you are going to have to come back for site plan approval to build this out because it's going to require grading, it's going to require drainage. And that's what we were hoping we were getting at here. We, were, uh, we weren't hoping, we were asking for that. Now he is asking for concessions and it appears this is about the third time people have come before us and not willing to make a concession. You've you got to put something in there that he has to return for site plan approval. Otherwise, I won't go for that. I, I agree totally with you, Jim. I draw my second. I don't know how you can, I don't know how we could enforce that if I can okay. put it in there. Exactly. That's, well, that's now, too. Okay. you could vote against it. Yeah, I will. This is the motion. Um, you he withdraws the second, so. 
So you have no second. Okay. So if we approve Steve Lewis, and he says and crosses his heart, he's going to come back and go through the site plan process, but he doesn't. We have no. Well, exactly. We're yes, screwed. that's okay. why I don't want to add contingent okay. upon returning. No. Okay. Uh, because you, know, you can't enforce it. Okay. okay. Either he's an honorable man or he's not an honorable man. He's I suppose. Man. Man. He's got three. He's got three. Yeah. Yeah, but I. I suppose you can it, understand our frustration about having this problem with the common for years. This is a public asset. It's not Esalon's asset. So um, we could put in a time limit that uh, I suppose if we did put in a time limit, first of all, we can't enforce it. But if it's if it's contingent upon seeing a site plan approval application within 60 days or 90 days, um, and it doesn't happen, then our only option is to turn to the zoning enforcement officer. Who may be reluctant, or uh, Steve yeah. Lewis Subaru may be reluctant to invest in in what it needs there if there is that hanging over it. We have asked the zoning enforcement officer to enforce it in the past two or three yeah. times, and it has not been adhered no, to. I, 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 I could see a point that if we put that comment in there, Steve Lewis Subaru may really walk away because he's going to want to say, you know, I can't sign a lease, I'm only going to be there for three months and be going to be thrown out the door. Investing money in the space, so as yeah. I am. So. That, that's why I was. I'll go back to my comment. Come back in two weeks with at least something besides this. If it's a deal killer for Steve Lewis Subaru, well, I hope it isn't, but I don't know. Um, I'm. I guess I would bat. I would part ways with you there. That coming back with a better schematic isn't going to. That's, I think I'll, I'll stick with Joe on that one. You well, know, we, I'm not going to be here too, for so that's right. It's for this, do any good. we really need, for the proposed parking, which is a great idea and you have a great location for it, but we still need to go through the exercise of site plan approval so we're sure about drainage and we know what curb cuts you actually have and things, all of which takes time. Um, so... I won't be here in two weeks. Yeah. I just realize that also. So that's yeah. not going to work. That's not going to work. Just either. coming back with a with a more detailed proposal um, that really doesn't achieve anyone's objectives either. So, so when you go through a proper site plan approval for this parcel, would it be save and accept the two thousand square feet and the ten spaces being leased to Steve Lewis Subaru or anybody else? No, at that point we'd be... Uh, He's free to do whatever he wants with the parcel. Yeah, he, he, once we go through site plan approval and approve it for all of these spaces, mm -hmm. then uh, you know, that doesn't affect the terms of his lease. It, you may end up marking some spaces as reserved for Steve Lewis, but um, but that's, that's a future thing. I, I, the site plan approval wouldn't change the tenancy, um, Would we be out of line if we said we approved it and said he has three years to work out the site? That's no, too long. That, that would be three too years long. A lifetime. Three, three years is a long time. Oh, that was sort of in the back of my mind, not to put a specific time limit, but just to limit it to a specific tenant. So yeah. if yeah. The, the Steve Lewis operation moves out in 18 months because right. they've accomplished what they set out to accomplish, right. Um. So, Bill, can I? So, I, I was actually here a couple of weeks ago when you had asked Randy to go back and specifically just look at how many spaces could fit in this property. Um, and I think that's essentially what he provided you with was essentially just how many spaces could fit there. Well, so, well, if, so I, I, I guess not, my that was is, not. Jeff, my question is, is that, so in, in terms of moving forward, what is, you know, in your opinion, what is something that you specifically want to see that makes you comfortable in, in determining how to move forward? Well, I think if we go back to the tape, and I think I asked Randy for it, I said, we want to know how big the lot is, how big the buildings are, what's left over. And um, I'm pretty sure I asked in those specific words or something very close to it. So, And there was some specific mention about not abutting the parking right on Route 9. So we did lay out sub-provisions, 
And, uh, um, but again, we're talking about two things here that we want to, we want to, we want to achieve a global settlement here. Um, but the level, the level of work that has to be done to get to that global settlement will take longer than you have. Um, you know, leasing the 2,000 feet to uh, Steve Lewis Subaru is not going to make the parcel any worse than it was. This is true. Correct. It won't make the parking on the worse. common any worse no, than it no, is. It sounds no. like they'll improve. And it sounds like they might And you lose. Well, no, it's not going to. Leasing the 2,000 to Steve Lewis is not going to have any impact on the common. No. Right. Because we're not no. talking about the adding the extra spaces yeah. overall at this stage. Right. We're not. We don't have the right application in front of us. What, what, what 10 space, or I mean, if that's a tougher, tougher question to answer. Where would it's what was space and where, where were you looking to put Steve Lewis Subaru parking? Um, we actually haven't reviewed it with Steve Lewis, but we had some plans. He was, uh, but judging by the plan, we would be he would be in the seven space spot, okay, likely. Um, and I think it's a maximum of 10 cars, which I from the sounds of it, it's he doesn't plan on having that many there, so um. We would have the seven spots and probably some in those one of the 18 spot space lanes there. It, in the back of the building here, that's just more gravel? Um, back, uh, back there, that's uh, dirt. That's dirt, yep. not, not grass. Uh, grass. Right? There's yeah. grass. Yeah, it used to have a bunch of junk in there. It no longer does. Okay. It's been beautified. Okay. Well, the reason, Jim, I... I was going to ask the same question. Uh, certainly when you do site plan, as I mentioned, we don't want to see a blacktop. We want green space. We want some trees. So where is the green space going to be, Randy? Question for Randy. Yeah, you know, there's actually some great green space here and here. And uh, that will remain. doesn't look like it's designated as green space yeah. here. So. Well, so again, this, 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 again, this pl this plan is lacking in a lot of things. Yeah. That's okay. Um, but we uh, could sit here and and, yeah. and beat this up. I'll, I'll I'll second that emotion again, but I'm gonna just say I don't know if you ever watch these board meetings, planning board meetings. I mean, it put you to sleep, but it's got a, it was a little lack there over a couple of years. But we've talked about the problem with the common a number of times, mm -hmm. and our frustration there. And this is the first time you showed up. This to is to talk about this. Um, I actually uh, was since I since I since, I've, okay. since I've been on the board. My in, my intention was to find a tenant that you know, satisfy my needs with the parking and have the smallest amount of parking spaces. Okay. So I've done that. Which well, I'm gonna okay. We have we have a motion and a second. a second. We have a motion and a second, and we can sit here and debate this all day long. Do you want to repeat the um, I'll call for. Can you repeat the motion? Please? Okay. The motion is to waive site plan approval for lease of 2,000 square feet in an existing structure to Steve Lewis Subaru, Inc., using up to 10 parking spaces with no sales or repair customers allowed on site. Are these spaces basically existing today? Uh, the gravel? Not, uh, let me double check. The seven? Not right now, but I have Carl's excavated, excavating um, designated. And there was vehicles parked there. It's just there's rocks and dirt that they had trucks parked up there until I bought the place. So okay, so this is basically gravel, not 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 as or is as grass. Uh, it's grassy gravel. Grassy we'll gravel. Okay, so it's gravel. It's basically gravel that's yeah. overgrown. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Parking to be located to rear of site. Ten spaces to be at, to be located at rear of site. So no, no. Echelon concessions. Correct. In the yep. motion? In the motion. We can go down there and pick it if he doesn't come back in a reasonable time frame with a proper site plan. How's that? We're not asking for curb cuts or anything. We're not asking for anything. And, and we're asking for no site plan approval on this. We're waiving site plan approval for this 2,000 square feet at parking back here. For now. 
Is it going to be a, just a temporary temporary measure bill the way you've got it worded? Yeah, well, it did. Three year, up to three years. Well, it does. Well, duration of the, the duration of Steve Lewis, Lewis, whatever he's there yes, for. Yes, for the use by Steve Lewis Subaru Inc. is limited to use by that tenant. Okay. For the perp, and they've been in, we've, they've already told us what their intentions are. Right. And you did put some about parking at rear? Parking to be located to rear of site. Okay, that's the motion and the second. All in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion passes four to one. Okay. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta get up. The paperwork for temp. So he can do whatever he's gonna do. What's that? Yeah. Just um, I just need one one of them. And, uh, Oops. If you were an amateur, this would be going on for two years. I gotta just be aware of that. Um, who is this is granted to? Who, who is the owner? Who is the owner? Uh, the property. This property. It's a uh, building. Building grounds LLC. Building grounds LLC. Yep. Okay. And this is ninety seven. Ninety seven Wilson Street. You know, there's a book written in the 60s it was kind of the beginning of the environmental movement very common or the tragedy of the commons for some reason I don't, I don't remember much from college but I remember that the tragedy of the commons it's, uh, if everybody put one cow on the common it was okay but when somebody decided oh, what the hell I'll put, I'll put two cows on that's where the problem began everything else Good. Jeff Squire, after all of that. Hopefully this will be um, This is um, 153 Russell Street with the address. Um, it was brought to our attention. There was some interest on behalf of the current owner and the uh, owner of the climbing gym potentially uh, subdivide this parcel that right now is 1.48 acres um, such that there would be the house lot up on front along Russell Street and then land in back that would abut the climbing gym property that could be used for future you know, parking expansion overflow if they need it. Um, and before we got too far down the rabbit hole, I said it probably would be a good idea to come in here to see if an A&R would be even appropriate. Um, it's a it currently it's a non-conforming lot due to inadequate frontage and setbacks. I think 175 feet is required in the zoning district. They've only got uh, 65. Uh, 30,000 square feet is the minimum lot size, so there is the ability to, you know, take out 30,000 square feet. But the house, just the one with the house on it. Yes. Yeah. And where's the? Uh... The mo doggy motel? That's that's this parcel right okay. there. Okay, yep. all right, all so right. So it's the land behind them. Right. So I just caution them that an ANR may not be approvable because it creates a greater nonconformity with with a smaller lot size, but that was a question that so I wanted what, to So what, what was the question you're trying to... They, there's some interest on behalf of the guys that own the climbing gym to subdivide that parcel so that they could utilize possibly that backfield for you know additional parking should they ever need it. This is where the house is located. That's where the house is right now. And they, this house owns this parcel. Correct. Well, there's a state law on that bill. How does that work with an existing house on it? Well, I think where's we the just where's the house? The house. We just can't make it. We can't approve anything that makes it more non-conforming. 
but it only has 75 feet of frontage. So, so that's not going to be more than right. How big is this parcel in total today? It's 1.48 acres. So, yeah. 60,000. So, in, so, so could this is in the aquifer, is it? Um, I, portion of it maybe. I don't know, I don't know where the... I'm not sure. they have so he wants to buy the whole parcel, carve out the house, and use this for parking, or or some future something. It's the only the only way they'd be able to access that backfield is through there through the planning gym parcel, obviously. What I'm thinking is, he could buy this parcel. This, to correct me if I'm if I speak out of turn, Bill. Depending if it's in the aquifer or not, he's going to leave forty or thirty thousand square feet. And the rest he could use about a 1.4 acres. He may be able to use up to a half an acre or so, depending on what's left over. Right. Is that basically so? Yeah. Uh, yes, it absolutely. Let's see. Is that? It'll be non-conforming so, by frontage, but it would be conforming by lot size. Correct. And so what I what I was concerned about is that reducing the overall size was creating a greater non. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Well, That's except it. that as long as you have the minimum lot size for the district, yes. which I think is 40. Unfortunately, the scale and the... Yeah, we'd have to, we'd have to find out if you're in the aquifer or not. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Mark might have a better map, too. Do you have a better map at the office of the aquifer? I, we probably do somewhere. I, it's, oh, yeah, I, know, it's, I know it's... It's online. It's Wait, in this... Oh, okay. Yeah. So... Basically, as long as you as long as you leave the limit, the minimum lot size for the zone, right. then you could then they could take the rest and, and leave that carve it out carve it out. Okay. Great. Okay. That's what we need to know. Before we do the okay. exercise. So. Is that a planning board decision or a zoning board of appeals decision? A and R. I a and R is planning board. Yeah, that would be planning board. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? There we go. All right, we will continue the site plan approval of uh, Gold Mohar Realty, and we will open the additional meeting. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, June 18th, 2019, which is continued to today because of the election on the 18th, beginning at 7.15 p.m. in the room 203 of the Hadley Town Hall. The purpose of the hearing is to review the application of Gull Mohar, Gull Mohar Realty for a special permit transfer of development rights to construct approximately a 50,500 square foot building at 237 Russell 237 Russell Street. Application and plans may be viewed in a town clerk's office during normal hours, published twice in the Gazette, May 28th and June 4th. area and uh, improving the existing stormwater system. Um, just to go very quickly, uh, we also are proposing a TDR requirement because we are adding square footage to the building itself by the second story from the single square places. Um, a couple of minor things have changed since our last presentation. They're very minor, but I wanted to point them out to you. Um, one, <clears throat> this is the existing condition of plan. This driveway, as you notice, is very wide. Um, I just looked at the mass DFT proposal for the new 
improvements, they show this same width of um, driveway. Our previous proposal, oops, we had, we had shown the driveway as a two lane driveway, and we're proposing to make that a three lane driveway and maintain exactly the same width of curb cut. It will allow vehicles to make a left and a right and not stack up there. So we're proposing to retain exact same width and exactly same width configuration. As so, so left and right out, one lane in. Correct. Yes. So uh, we're actually not even touching the state layout. So we're not even record, we're not even going to the mass DOT. We're not touching any of the state layout property. We're not changing the use. When we're actually decreasing the number of rooms, so we'll be decreasing the traffic impact. So we feel that we are exempt from applying to the mass DOT for that purpose. Another thing that slightly changed was um, the building was a little bit larger when we first presented it to you. We went to the Conservation Commission on an earlier hearing. They were concerned about the proximity of the building to the 35-foot no disturb zone. Um, so we actually took off three rooms off the building, shrunk the building, and brought it back, and presented that to the Conservation Commission. They approved it two weeks ago. So the project has been approved by the uh, had the Conservation Commission. Um, the project was peer reviewed by uh, um, Ashmont McDonald. We believe that the, the, the planning board has received that. It was, I think, a very positive review. Um, some of the things, uh, I don't know how much you want to go over the same details that we had before, but nothing has really changed. We're proposing to demolish the existing building, put in a brand new single building, uh, L wing, scenario, new utilities. Um, we are proposing, um, I know that we'd like to have the island separated with, we have grass landscaped islands in here to separate the parking to, be, to prevent it from being large. We are proposing lighting in there, dark sky lighting, so actually the lighting will be improved from the existing conditions. The existing lights are, I don't think, quite dark sky compliant. The new plan lights will be dark sky compliant. Um, I'll give you a handout so the cuts and we have a lighting diagram to show that condition. Closing lighting in the landscaping in the front, uh, way back, uh, respecting the 50 foot setback from the front um, parking lot. I'm going to very quickly hopefully there's some questions that I want to review the previous scenario. Uh, this is just a grading plan. You probably can't tell too much from here, but this shows that we have designed it to grade properly, drain properly, um, and not encroach on any of the uh, neighboring properties. Uh, we already make sure we're not grading inside any of where inside the 35 foot no disturb zone <coughs> from the Conservation Commission. So we'll continue going through very quickly here. So we have to time. This is basically the utilities. We're maintaining existing electric sewer connection and water connections uh, into Route 9. Uh, we are proposing currently there is an existing underground drainage structure approximately this location where the new build, existing a new building is going to go. We are replacing that with new um, storm, un, underground stormwater retention and uh, infiltration systems. The old system was designed 10, 15 years ago, designed properly, but the regulations and stringent criteria have drastically changed. So we've upgraded it. We've addressed water quality, attenuation, and recharge. So the system that we have shown here is better than what was there before, uh, both because the improved technology that we're utilizing for stormwater Plus, we're actually decreasing the amount of impervious area that we're um, proposed to do construction on. This is just construction details. I don't think we need to get to those unless you really want to. And we are asking for um, some TDR. This is just a summary of the open space. Uh, the open space is a dark graded area. The building space is obviously the white. Um, the hashed areas are the reserve parking areas. We have a tally of that, which you have to pull, which we can give you. And I think we need 7.7 .7 acres of TDR to accomplish this criteria. We have adequate parking, we feel, for the proposed rooms that we have. Um, we have more than one room, one parking space per room. This is a lighting diagram, which um, shows that we are our sky compliant, we're not bleeding onto any of the neighbors. We are going by 0.1, I think, uh, foot candle on two locations right next to Randy's 
house, but other than Randy's uh, property, but that's the only light storage we have, and that's a very, very minor spot right there, I want to be honest. Um, and I think the next question, uh, so we want to stop on the site, um, continue with the site. I will come over to Rick if we want to talk any more on the actual architecture. Yeah, the height, building height was a, was a question at the last meeting. Correct. The planning board has always de determined building height to mean the actual height of the roof to the, uh, if you would, the mean ground level or the, I forget exactly what it's called, the, 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 there's a definition of the ground, not the average height. I looked up in a building code, and the building codes, mass building code specifically says the highest point of the roof is, is the and then you take the a, you, the the average height of the pious I've got exact wording, um, but I says, what does that mean? I had I does it mean the average roof height, or the average of the peak, highest peak? I I, I asked him, he said it means the average, of average roof height using the highest peak. I said that's a heck of a calculation. In other words, you take the highest el the highest elevation of the roof and then you average the height the height of the roof itself using that I said, depending on the slope of the roof I says that's a horrible calculation he says yep he says, that's why I wanted I want to define in our definitions the roof height to be the top of the peak <clears throat> he says because it's very clear he says when you start doing the average roof he's I says that's a I said, depending on a slope I says that's a that's a good calculation to make. He says it's a it's a heck of a it's, it's a mess, and he's but that's the way the state defines it. So, what is your average height? I'm going to, if we're, we're um, I'm, I'm the site guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. if any question was on the site? I'll look. But I'll turn over to the architectural to Rick. I am Rick from AGI Architecture out of Northampton. So, mean height is the. And it is a pain in the butt calculation because I did it. <laughs> uh, and we did reduce the slope in order to conform. The last presentation, we did not conform and do the calculation correctly. So the slope of the roof is now down to a 612 pitch. We were slightly top, uh, steeper, which then generates a higher mean level. And, and basically, it's taking that top roof. So from the eave of that roof to the ridge of that roof, the mean, the, which is allowed at 42 feet. We're at just under 42 feet. We're at 4111 and change. That's just the way the map works. W what is the peak of the roof right now? The peak of the roof is at 57.3. I don't know if that's the current uh, um, elevation. No. Well, that's a heck of a height. It is. That's 60 yeah. feet tall. Yeah, look at our bedrooms under that. So we're at 40. So let's correct that because what we did is we took out some floor to floor height. We figured out what we can do with the HVAC, so we reduced the floor to floor height. Um, and we took out, as I said earlier, the pitch and dropping that down. So let me correct it based on this 49 feet 5.5 inches is the top of the ridge. Not the cupola, but the ridge. So you're seven feet, so you're seven feet over the maximum, over what we. No, that, that's the building. I know, I, but the yeah. way we calculate it, you're seven feet over. If you're holding to the ridge, the ridge is that what you're saying that the yeah, conversation yeah, with yeah. Sim was that it would go to the yeah. ridge, or that you wanted to redefine what it was going to be, not you, what it is currently? Well, just, well, well, give me the, just give me that number again for what the ridge, ridge. forty nine feet five point five inches, the mean elevation forty one feet eleven and three quarters. Forty one. Forty one. Eleven three. -quarters. It's been a few years since uh, I've had a discussion about definition of terms. Could you explain the difference between mode, median, and average? Uh, not being a mathematician, I, I no, no, that. No, um, there, is, there is a definition of... Well, median uh, is, is the numerical sequence, which one falls in... The, the middle, not necessarily the average. The average, you total them all up and divide by the That's total number. That's correct. And what's the mode? The mode is the most mode frequent, the, the, the most frequent frequent. appearing number? Yeah. I knew the engineer would know that. Okay, okay so, so we're, 
Median versus average is what we're discussing. No, no, and, no. And, and we're, we're, we're not, we're not yeah, talking yeah. median. Median is out of the uh, question. Out of the picture. It's just okay. average. Good. Thank average you. and peak. Mm -hmm. Right. Actual right. peak versus the average peak. Correct. Well, yes. So that's how that was determined. Again, roof ridge 49, 5.5, roof bead 34, 6.5, overall roof height 14, 11.5, giving it infractions here instead of mixing the decimals. So the mean roof height is 41 feet, 11 and 3 quarters. Under the foot, zero maximum. Again. What's our bylaw said, Jim? Building height. Building height and number of feet? 40, I think it's 42. 42. 42? 42. 42. How tall is the current building? Pardon? How tall is the current building? Smaller than that. It's lower than that. Yeah. Fine. How did I, get that? I don't know. Don't know. I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't answer that. I don't even know if they have an idea of how high, how tall it is. It's definitely higher than that. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's all a four story straight up. It's not four stories. Really flat. Yeah. Not four stories. Oh, yeah. Only two. Yeah, we just, we just built. We just built a three story. Over, yeah, we just built a three story <clears throat> building out in down next to all these. It's yeah. not four stories. But you didn't have any residents in the area, too, so you didn't have any big That got passed through, I don't know how. Um, especially with all the units on top, that's way higher than the building code. What units are on top? Your air handlers and all that. That's well, we have no air handlers on any of the roofs, so that's out of turn right there. Uh, you're right, you're absolutely right. I was thinking that I, all, all you've got is AC process. units and windows on because they're on the walls. Yeah, across yeah. the street. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. In the previous life, I worked for a company named Pennzoil Corporation in Houston. And the building we lived, worked in was called Pennzoil Place, and there were two trapezoidal towers. Do you know the building? Yeah, yeah. you studied it. Mm -hmm. And it ended at the 35th floor. So you're saying that Pennzoil Place would be seven for purposes of this would be 17 and a half stories rather than 35 stories i would not say that that's an equal equation no the way no. that that the volume no. of that building was yes. that's, that's not an apples to apples that's i mean there, there weren't like e this is a this is a strict e that's a fixed right. elevation that ridge is a fixed elevation our roof height is a determinable number I mean, I understand what, you, what you're asking. I mean, yeah. that goes to the question of how do you... You're talking about you want, how do you you want the mean here. How do you determine it? Depends on what place. was 35... Right, so, 35 the, so the mean time. is the average the of mean the there is The mean there is irrelevant. Right, here we can determine that because we have an eave and we have a ridge, and that is the roof height, 14 and a half feet. And then that's where you get the mean line because you can determine right. it. The roof height 42, is determined by 42 the eave to the ridge. Yeah. So that's locus code. That's the current code that you just said. Correct. Well, that's the def that's the definition of mean in that particular instance. The the regulation is saying building height, and that's kind of what we're getting hung up on is what is the determination of building height? Is it mean height? Is it is is it the ridge height? What's well, the height of the Empire State Building? Forty two. Tower that goes to the antenna. It depends on if you're the developer and you want to claim that you have the world's tallest yeah, building, right. and then you claim it's the top of the spire yeah. if you're trying to work with zoning. Okay, so as far as we're just talking about ridge lines, but just to, to clarify on some of the other things, the limitations on heights of buildings shall not apply in any district to chimneys, cooling towers, elevator bulkheads, skylights, ventilators, electronic equipment, elevator shafts, other necessary appurtenances, and if not used for human occupancy, towers, spires, or other ornamental features of buildings. So, yes, you can have something that's over 42 um, in the business district. The cupolas don't count in the height here. Right. Got it. That's just no ornamental feature. If I were to play devil's advocate, do we have a definition of height in our, in our code? No. No. And if we don't have a definition that's different than the state building code, isn't there an argument that we should adopt that? I mean, if we haven't defined it ourselves. That is an argument. That's, yeah, I'm just... 
That is an argument. That doesn't help their concerns about their privacy, but I'm just putting that out there. What I guess troubles me is, in that analysis is that if this were a flat roof building, we wouldn't be having the discussion. And so why should a peaked roof building be larger than a flat roof building? More attractive. Well, in this case, because it's in the uh, Village Center Overlay District, they're required to have a peaked roof. Yeah. But, but nevertheless, um, you know, if, if I don't know how you can measure them differently just because of architectural features. It seems that height is height. Well, if the definition is mean height, then the mean height is exact on a flat roof is the eave. It's the top of the highest structure, the parapet right. or the drip edge, the, the gravel let, 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 let me ask a strange question here. I don't know if this, the architect could answer. Oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe more than that. What is in What's the height? What's the height of that roof again? Forty nine. To the peak. Forty nine. Forty nine. Five and a half inches. What is in that roughly eight feet of space from the from the average? Is there anything up there? It's just structural truss space. Just structural to, to trusses. Make, there's no, there's nothing. The the there, there are any. Is there any HV? Any mechanicals in the roof at all? At this point in time, that was not planned. That was not planned. Be, no. So is it something required by the? Uh, Company that's going to put their name on it. Is what required? Is, is this design required by this is based whatever on, franchises? Yeah, this is based on town places standards that have been modified to to meet the requirements that we have for this particular uh -huh. piece of property. So they would actually have different materials. It would be a much more contemporary looking structure, but again, to fit into what we've established here in this. Um, Property that's tempered to meet the requirements. Do they, do they have a prescription for roof pitch? Or? They do not. They typically have steeper roofs, and that's why we came to you originally with that because we were looking at their design guidelines. Um, but then when so the issue came up strange. about needing to reduce it to have the mean that's hit 42 it satisfied the bylaw. Yeah, hmm? we went to the six foot. So if we it voted goes. to say it must be 42, would that be a game changer and you have to redesign the whole building? Well, you wouldn't be able to do a pitched roof and have a three-story building. Well, the math just wouldn't qu work. Qu 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 question, I just, what if you went to the 42-foot level, you had a pitched roof and flat? Is that ridiculous, Gambrell? Is that acceptable to the zone? Let us worry about the bylaw okay. separately. I'm asking, I'm asking an architectural and engineering question, structural question, first of all. Yeah. With a pitched roof for pitched whatever roof. it would be, flat. eight feet, and flat. then a flat across the top so that it looks. So this magic line you just yes. cut across that we're trying to do is basically at the ridge of the entrance facade. Which right, is okay. The Rough important part. piece. Okay. So, so where we have this dash here, you're effectively saying all of that would disappear. It would be flat. It would be flat. So your, your roof would look something like this. Correct. Like what, Jim? That. So. Like so. a gambrel roof, yeah. Like a gambrel. Yeah, that's yeah. what we said at the last meeting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was it dismissed by you people? No, no. no, no, we, no I don't we, believe we discussed We, we didn't discuss it very much because we didn't know what height meant. Uh, right. We didn't know what the definition of height right. meant. And we still have an old, we still have a strange definition. What I'm saying is if... This can be done for a not unreasonable cost. It satisfies most of the bylaw, with the exception of a peach pick, peak, peak pitched roof. Well, it is partially pitched. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what about the cupolas? What? What about the cupolas? Mm -hmm. The cupolas are diminutive compared to what's going to end up being a flat roof. Yeah. Um, and so that becomes a bit of an issue. Bear with me while we flip over to the side. Okay, so we're basically talking about chop chopping it in this vicinity. Yes. Uh, here. Um, so this cupola, in all honesty, is what starts making it look a little silly. 
because now it's truly a little doghouse yes. um, in a in a wide I, flat I understand in, yeah. in a flat area. So I, again, I don't. I'm not saying it's. I'm not questioning. I don't know what's going to look good. I'm just saying, could it be done? First of all, from a structural point of view. The answer to your question is yes, absolutely. It can be. And it okay. is often does it, done. Does it make sense to do that? And what does it look like? And cupolas and all of those things. I, I find that the vocabulary of the cupola and a gambrel roof doesn't work historically I, or visually. I, I'm not going to disagree with that comment yeah. without seeing it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I can just I can just mentally look at it. It's yeah. like it's it's looks like something in the middle of nothing. The only way you could do it would be to put it at the top of that front. So now it's not in the center of the building, but from when you see it, it looks like. You're going to imagine that the building is that big. Yeah. I'm not advocating for it. No, I understand. It's, 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 it's kind of a weird. You've got to fill our architecture. I understand. <laughs> these, are, these are non, non billable hours. So. <laughs> um, so, from that perspective, um, and I don't mean to be dismissive, Mark, uh, that's a Disney solution you can where you see, you see everything from the front. Yeah. But these folks are going to see it. I mean, what, are you concerned about a building that may be seven feet taller? but has a nice proportion to it versus you see the back of this kind of contrived thing to meet the technical definition of what the height is. I don't want to look eye to eye to somebody in their room. I don't want a bad There's There's nobody in there. No. Cutting the top of this roof off doesn't lower any of the windows. All of those are, are well below the elevation yeah. of the E, which is 34 yeah. feet. Yeah. All of these are lower than that. So what we're talking about is just chopping off empty roof space. I have a gamble roof on my home. Okay. I mean, you can also, a true gamble roof is actually not flat. Right. It's right. double pitched. And so you have shingles and you have the same look. If we were to try to do it here, we, we pretty much would run out of, of roof height to do a true gamble roof. So we're talking about sort of a contemporary okay. version like of that. Yeah. The problem, the front, not the back. Right. Uh, the problem I have with that is now I'm starting to mix roofing materials, I've mean, I got a flat roof, I'm doing a membrane roof up there, and then all of, the more you have dissimilar materials joining is more opportunity for leakage and all of those things. We start putting cupolas, whether they're to the front of the facade or they're centered or whatever. Uh, I, I don't think you, I don't think you could put cupolas. The, the cupolas are a requirement, well the cupolas are a Well, it's not a, the requirement and is that. The cupola's that not required, it's, 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 it's what is required is to break up any continuous roof height of over so many, 70, yeah. up 75 feet. No roof line shall exceed 75 feet of continuous run. Right. Without a break of some sort. And historically in this whole area, up and down or nine, the, the cupola has been the solution. I mean. Yeah, you you could change the elevation by changing the roof height, or you can break it up with some kind of an architectural feature. Most content, most decide to put in the architectural feature because it's a lot easier. Uh, you could put um, a um, a fake dormer and achieve the same result. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, if the dormer impacted the ridge, because you, when you're talking about um, a 75 feet of continuous roof, are you really talking about the Ridge of the roof, or are you talking about just the, the plane of the We roof? have accepted cupolas as uh, as dormers. an alternative. Dormers, dormers as yeah. an alternative. Okay. So, so if you got those out of here and you did a dormer that related to the windows, yeah. you're breaking up the mass of the roof, not necessarily yeah. the line. Of the right. right, right. Okay, okay. Yes. That, thank you. Yeah. That's a clarification. Yeah, we, we don't require you break up the rig, we require some kind of a break in the roof yeah. to make as long as it gives the illusion, yeah. if you would, of a break. Okay. And there's a lot of ways it can be done. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, who's, so, there have been a couple of dormers put on, I believe, but I'm not positive. Yeah, the, the um, auto repair place did dormers instead of a cupola. Right, yep. yeah, yeah. And um, what was the Sears? Okay, right. On the, on the long side that goes. Okay. But all of those issues really are mm, diminutive to the height issue, right? I mean, we're really talking about what is the form of the roof going to be? And, and what is the objection? Part of it may be the, the overall height of the building, but I'm hearing that the concern is that people are above you looking down into you. Right. And modifying the height of the roof doesn't impact That's not going to change anything. Right. Yeah. Unless you leave the roof the way it is and, and take the third floor off. Yeah, that, that's, that's not going to happen. That's a hard business, business, decision. business, that's, business yeah. Yeah. Right. that's a business decision. We. We don't have the authority to force them to do that because they have the room to do what they're doing. We want lots of trees, too. Not to take any more drop down between the hotel and the wetlands, but to put more. They used to have a um, 
Yeah, a line. Once they took that line down and made more parking, we heard a lot more noise. Once they took those trees down. Otherwise, before that, we didn't hear the parking mm -hmm. lot. So well, yeah, a planning trees so, are a buffer to sound. Yeah. So and, and also, 20 years ago, when that hotel was built, people didn't have individual car alarms. So every night you hear 60, 70 people clicking their car alarms. Beep, beep, beep. So the sound issue is something that can be mediated at ground level. But it's different than the window issue. Um, set different issue. Yeah, but so I'm just trying to come okay. to the issue of your your concern about your your uh, privacy. Right. Well, so we got audio issues, which could be mediated with ground plantings and trees. They will only get better as they grow bigger over over time. But the visual thing isn't going to get impacted by the building height because the windows are going to be where they are. But the roof will still be above the tree line, being at 49 feet. Yes, it will be above the tree line. Yeah. Right. So, 42. so, 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 42 may be above the roof line too. Right. Above the tree line. Well, Maybe not right now. What you put it in. Be. How fast the trees are growing as well. There's some mature trees. Is it so, I mean, is, is the issue purely the height of the building? That right. that's offensive? That that's sticking in your craw? Or is it the privacy? Or is it both? I'm it's trying both. to understand. It's, it's both. 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 Okay. So from the, the window point of view, I think we all agree that a two-story building, the, the business plan just doesn't fly. Town place isn't going to go that they have a certain capacity that they need to see in their facilities. But they did move but the original, currently, two floors. currently the building originally when Different. we started, the, the conservation committee suggested the building be moved up front, like kind of reverse, yeah. kind of reverse it, which was less invasive, I felt to the properties on the back side. And now it's back further. If anything, it moved closer to us. And then I think you remove the three rooms to keep the boundary. Right. So, you know, the original plan was better because it wasn't on top of us. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it wasn't the original plan has a change. Conservation change. Committee asked you to move the building. They you asked were, if we you were look at yeah. moving it closer to Route 9. But the problem is the property tapers as you go towards Route 9. So by moving the building closer, you will be violating the setback requirements for the building. So when we did examine trying to put the building up, up toward Route 9, but it didn't, did not fit. Can there be an exception to move it closer to Route 9? No. We would be against that. There's no, there's no, there's no hardship. They need, they need a zoning a board, variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals, and uh, they need a hardship to show that. And there's nothing that says they have a hardship here. It'd be it purely aesthetics. Yeah. And we, we meet all the zoning setback requirements. Uh, and just a yeah. uh, clarification, there's proposing to be no clearing between the back of the building and uh, for the back. Actually, we're pulling the pavement further away than existing, so there will be no trees removed in the rear of the park zone. Can we flip back project. to the plantings plan and sure. see what kind of buffer is there? Yeah. And I want to take yeah. that. show but um, it's sort of just it doesn't really show the uh, tree line here but the existing pavement comes up to about here and we're actually removing that pavement and turning this into green area and none of the trees were I think will be taken down in this location probably is there to you guys what, what more I'm just yeah, yeah. Yeah. so you're, you're indicating this back here yeah, right now. Go back yeah. and we'll see where that other little house is there. Here we go. Yeah, That's I think, better. Yeah, this sort of shows a little bit. I mean, it's not really clear, but uh, this is National Road here. This is the edge of the parking lot in this location. And we're proposing to actually pull that parking lot back a little bit. And all these trees between here and National Road will be retained. We're not proposing to remove any of these trees. And do you recall the rough height of those trees? Uh, I, I don't know. And they're primarily deciduous? Or? They're mostly deciduous, yes. Which means this you don't have to This is actually a, a, a wetland winter. here, so I'm assuming most of these are probably maples yeah. in this location. And again, National Road is, is down here. And the it looks bigger sometimes. <laughs> That's a hard see, though. That's a hard it's hard to see. I'm just trying to get a relationship yeah. between... Yeah. National Road, the fact that we're not removing any of these trees, any of this existing. That looks off the big but, but, <laughs> but your place on Pine Hill mm -hmm. currently gets all the light shining in 
the windows. Already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the bulk of the structure is going to be perpendicular to Nashua Road. Um, yeah, it, it will be this most, way. Most here. of the windows will here. face east and west. Okay. And the ones that do face south are more towards Salvatore's lot and the house that's there right now. Because that house is elevated. So it's not pointing, most of the windows aren't pointing directly into that corner. Another question about the height. Um, just going back to it, was that height restriction or that requirement applied to other buildings yes. in Hadley? Yeah. Because I'm just looking at the other so large. So a precedent for everybody else to jump up their buildings to three stories. Everywhere up and down Route 9. This is route, nine route 9 is currently zoned for three stories. Well, this is what we're one in for one into the other. They're going to they're gonna okay. do it. Route okay. 9 is a business zone. The zoning, the, the zoning map or bylaw specifically says three stories, 42 feet from the bridge all the way to the Amherst Town Line. Good, because my bill might motel. I don't want to hear no crap about it. <laughs> so I'm going to build The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, Limited route, route 47 north and south are zoned differently, and those are two and a half stories, 35 feet. And our precedence has been to enforce the height as the peak. That's been our with all the others. It honestly has never come up before. Yes, sure, it has with all the road signs and everything around the mall. You guys are all up in arms about that years ago. How high we go with those? Yeah, the uh. The, the and that bylaw was changed. The, uh, oh, we just changed it. <laughs> um, originally, the movie theater was proposed to be a taller building. They went for a zoning variance and were granted it under a special permit, and it was never built, so it never became an issue. They never decided. They decided not to build it as tall as they had approval for. So they built a shorter building that complied with the 42 feet. And it's a flat roof, so it's a different story entirely. Because most of the bigger buildings are flat roofs and not peaks. Now, if we missed it on the other hotel up by, uh, maybe we did. Um, the other one you built uh, at the village no, barn shops. That's that one, maybe. By then, we were going with Tim's definition, the, or the definition at the time, or the bylaw interpretation. Yeah. Which but you which, also had no well, residence to So basically, the, 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 yeah. you know, this is purely a thing of, a, of aesthetics. We can go by, for, the, for this issue, the planning board can use the building code definition of the average height or we could go by the peak height, the 42 feet, and they could go with the flat. Um, which one would be more, excuse me, more attractive? Um, asking? I'm asking the planning board. I think, the, oh. I, I think unfortunately, that the first one is more attractive. As presented. Yeah. I think the roof height looks more balanced. That that I, I, I agree that putting up a... 42 foot roof with a pitch and a, and a flat would meet the bylaw, but it would look strange. Because mm -hmm. um, it could look like a long, flat something, and. It would look like. <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice! Yeah. Pick on Mike! <laughs> but. You have a nice one. <laughs> um, no vote. But, you know, we, can, we could. Probably justify the zoning bylaw either way, depending on a building code, because our definition isn't hard and fast. But which one would look better is a question. I think this one would look look better here, it, and in the spirit of compromise, in order to clarify it, I would look for some kind of unanimous consent that from now on we measure height to the peak of the roof. So there well, will we're, not we're gonna, be we're, confusion we're, we're, for the next we're, developer. We're, we're going to get definition of that, but I, I would agree with that one, Joe. But as long as we can agree on it with our board, 
and meet and meet the meet the, meet the bylaw by definitions one way or the other because unfortunately we don't have a hard fast definition. Correct. Your two cents, Bill. Um, I think that the peaked roof looks more appropriate for New England. Yeah. What if they planted some additional trees in the back that were perhaps well, then, put some some um, coniferous something that's going to be. Even when when the leaves drop, you'll have some privacy. When, when you got the no, when you you you're, you back up, excuse me. You've got the no disturb zone that you essentially encroaching less upon. Can you plant trees in that? No disturb is no disturb. No disturb is no yeah. disturb. Yeah, they were very adamant about that. Actually, they want us to demarcate it as part of the order conditions, so that no one. Trespasses or there's anything beyond that uh, 35 foot no disturb zone. And okay. when the birds drop seeds in there and they grow into trees, yeah. you can't cut them down. <laughs> they specifically wrote in there that uh, even though I, my opinion, you, they didn't need to, if we do anything inside that 35 foot no disturb, we have to go back to the Conservation Commission, which is the rules and laws anyway, but they made that specific additional condition on their order. Okay. So we're, we're not allowed to go into that 35. And that 35 foot zone extends beyond your property to the other side? Correct. Uh, and that extends right to your parking lot with no space to plant. This, this is the 35 foot no disturb. Right. So we could plant something in here if we wanted to. No, no, what I'm saying is where's the edge of your property? Oh, the property goes way back. Go, go to the top map again. The view. Well, let me, let me go to this one here. This is, this is the entire parcel. Oh, that's the entire parcel. This okay. Is the existing conditions. Okay. And then our building is sort of, I mean, our proposed project ends at this. Okay. Park, this where's, point. where's the 35 foot zone to the set to the north? There is, this is the 35 foot limit right here. Where's the, where's the southern 30? Where's the southern zone? The, where's the zone on the other side of the in other yeah. words, on could you plant on the other side of the no disturb? Where where was the thirty five foot zone? Where is the limit of the thirty five foot zone to the south? Well, oh. th this is natural road. We don't own beyond here. So, okay, so up. This, this is our property line. Oh, this is your property. Line. That's national. That's national property line and right and, and national road. Okay, and the no so no disturb goes all the way to your property line. Yes. So this okay. this is the wetland. This is a no disturb zone. This is a hundred foot buffer. Okay, it to the south. Along Nashua Road, the, the, the no disturb zone goes right up to the road. Oh yeah, there's there's a no disturb zone. Uh, the, the wetlands, I think, continue on through here. Okay, okay, that was my and, question. And so I think there's a no disturb zone. Yeah, my question so. was if you if the if the property parallel to Nashua Road of yours was out of the no disturb zone, could you plant trees there? The answer is no, because, because that's in the, that's in that's part of the wetlands. Well, we don't own that property. Either. No, no. But you, wetlands, you, wetlands go right up that's my question. Yeah. Yes. Right. What I was saying is, if the if the wetlands didn't go that far, right. and you had let's say ten or fifteen feet along Nashua, if we had some in here, but this, this, this is all wet. That's, that's, that's okay. That's, that was my question. All right. That answered the question we had. No. That was the question we had. Okay. So there's no chance of putting extra trees there for a buffer. Conservation Commission says no. Let's go back to the conservation. <laughs> you can go back to it. They go. They, they, they go by the state regulations. Well, also too, the the idea is that that wetlands has grown over the years and it could continue to migrate. So that thirty-five buffer. You know, it, it's different. Years, it, it, it's different years. today than when the building yeah, was the exactly. first building was put up exactly. twenty years ago. Yeah. That was mentioned. Probably 40 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. If Valley starts maintaining its ditches, it may not grow much more, but if they don't... Yeah. Well, the land behind Stop and Shop used to be buildable land. Today, because of Route 9 and everything else building up and all the muck and everything else, the wetlands behind Stop and Shop now extends from Stop and Shop to University Drive, almost to Rocky Hill Road, for, um, except for a few little small areas. But that was always like that. That was low all the way through. It was low all the way through, but it wasn't so. Used to tell me all of that was swamp. That was always a low spot. Low spot, but not the swamp that it is today. Right. Yeah. That because of because of all the stuff that's built up. Yeah. That was a swamp. I remember going hunting back there as a kid, and yeah, it was it was 
We Whoa. Were fishing wildlife but, but back you, there. We used to trap back there. But, but, but you used to be able to walk through there without a problem. To Today you'll sink up to your hips in the, in, the, in the jungle. <laughs> yeah, anyways, okay. It's mud. <laughs> okay. Um, you better watch if you're going to start picketing our meetings. So, <laughs> we were talking 50 years ago hunting back there. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess the consensus of the board is we would rather see the peaked roof because it it's better looking. Even though it, it, it complies with the definition by the state. And to Joe's point, from now on, the roof line will be the peak of the roof, period, not the average. So if you come back to us, Mark, do another one, remember yeah, we'll that. Do that. <laughs> Okay. But we've got to change the zoning bylaw. Well, we've got to change, we've got to change the definition. To do. Got to, our definitions are going to define a lot of things that are kind of... Not fuzzy. necessarily, Mike. There are a lot of things that are left to one interpretation. You cannot define every right. heavy little yeah. nuance. We'll, we'll put definitions define, in place, and a year from now we'll find something that... will depend is, on your legacy. Is, ...is going to be evergreen. What else do we have? Uh, that was a transfer of development rights. Transfer to, I mean, that's... Yeah. Yeah. Officially, I just wanted to... Uh, you asked for a summary of the transfer of development rights. Right. And then also, this was a cut of lights, just for your record. Uh, again, oh. The LED. Oh, that's a different looking one, huh? It's an LED, dark sky. Uh, that's the pole lights. We have wall packs, and we also have bars. Oh, so all your all your all your lights are going to be of this design. LED. What do you call that design? We call it, traditionally we ask for the shoebox, but this is this is all down lighting again. So but the style, would you? Uh, it's an LED. LED. But the new it's LEDs ours. they don't have the, you know, you keep Usually you need a shoebox because you have a light up there with Correct. a reflector and a glass. Yes, yes. But the LED, the whole light is about this big. Text, yeah. Actually, they put you know twenty of them up there, so it's. Tiny so no dark skies, no imminent to the Correct. There's neighbors. No side, there's no side glare. These are new dark sky plans. Again, what? Uh, and so you have the lighting plan in your. The lighting plan is, is in the package. Okay. Um, I just I only brought three of these, but again, you flip through. There's the wall pack. It's the same design, and there's a bollards that go around the front of the building. Um, it's essentially the same type of lens. So seven point two. Excuse me. Seven point two eight acres of TDR is what is required. Yes. And the latest price we had is ninety nine seventy eight. So call seventy dollar dollar for seven point two. What were those numbers again? Seven point two eight acres of TDR. Do you want to give the explanation to Mark what we're calculating and what we're doing? So, Ted, did you you understand the TDR bylaw or not? Roughly, but if you want to explain it, the, uh, the TDR is is to the neighbors too. transfer development rights, and it was a bylaw that we adopted probably close to twenty years ago, and it allows for a building to be constructed. Um, when it doesn't have adequate parking required by the bylaw, but has adequate parking for the need of the building. It's a special permit. Or is it, yeah, special, it is yes. a special permit. And we hold the public hearing like, like we're doing today. And the TDR value is determined pretty much, the latest one we got is 2017. We need to get a new one for the Conservation Commission because they give us that value. But the TDR value is based on an average of the prior number of years of APR land that was purchased. Um, and right now the value we're using is 99.78. And the value of that price is just about a year and a half old. So we should get, get a new one for the conservation. 9.978. 9.978. And sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. The first year we did TDR, I think the value was... Fourteen to fifteen thousand. It was way up there because of some APR land that was purchased had a very high value. Since then, APR land again has fluctuated, um, and it's kind of staying right around ten thousand an acre now for the last couple of times. Well, that's because the state department uh, has uh, the Massachusetts State Department has purposely lower the value so okay. that 
young farmers can pay for, and the Seattle property was a case in point. It would bid 13000 for the land, and the state took it away from the Pulse people and gave it to Goulet, yeah. who bid 9000 and but so that's But that's not what the TDR value is based on. The TDR value is based on the APR paid to the farmer to buy the development rights. A number of years ago, when we first started, there was some high-priced land that was purchased. Since then, it's been a little bit different. But Joel's right that the value to the farmer has stayed right around 10 grand an acre, but the value of APR purchase rights can vary all over the place depending on where it's located and, you know, a so, lot of other things. We, so don't get, we don't get into that, so I can't even explain a lot Just of so that. we don't get drowned in the alphabet yeah. soup, transfer, TDR is transfer development rights. APR is agricultural preservation restriction. The APR program, the state comes in and buys the development rights to your land uh, so that you do not have to sell it to a developer. <clears throat> the um, TDR, transfer of development rights, is used in part to fund, actually the technical wording of the bylaw is the agricultural preservation bylaw, the money that the town clears from <clears throat> allowing the transfer of development rights goes into a fund that is used to pay for the town's contribution towards purchase of agricultural preservation restrictions on other properties elsewhere in town. So but it's not the sole source because the state contributes. The state right. contributes too, but the, the, the town's con contribution to the APR program is fully funded out of the transfer of development rights. The, ta the town always has to pay, pay a share of APR purchases with to the farmer to the state. We have been lucky in that the TDR, this program right here, has funded the town's share of the APR rights mostly for a number of years, and we haven't had to take anything out of our general budget to fund the town share. So it saved the taxpayers money a, a bit. At, at one time, part of the Conservation Commission's budget, as voted at town meeting, was a, uh, a pot of money to be a, applied to future transfer, uh, future APR purchases. Right. Anyway, one TDR, one acre of TDR, if you, the person, developers have enough parking spaces, they can buy, put money into this fund. One acre of TDR, which in this case is 9978 value, purchases 10 parking spaces. And we define a parking space for figuring, even though it's different than what a standard parking space is, as 10 feet by 20, or 200 square feet. And you can one park, okay, this is, we can get 20 per acre, not 10 per acre, 20 spaces per acre. Um, is that the way it works out? 20, yes. Yeah, because 200 and a standard acre is whatever. So you get about 20 spaces per acre. Yeah, 20 spaces gives you one acre of TDR. And that equates to square foot, square foot, square feet, which is 200. And therefore, you take the total number that they need, which in this case is uh, you need to purchase. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a little bit blacky here, 99, okay. So you, you missed a number here, but that's okay. So it, it equals 7.28 acres of what, they, of what they need to purchase to meet, to make up the balance of what is missing on their parcel. And this parcel is being approved strictly as the motel. If the use were to change to something else, they would be severely limited on what could be built there because it may not have enough parking, and they would have to make appropriate changes to their design and their use. Do you, you call it a motel or hotel? Hotel. 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 Hotel is more than one story. Motel is single story. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of pretty much. Yeah. Kind of out there. There's some usually motels they have. Ex they call them exterior corridors where you just go out. When you open the door, you go out. Okay. Side. You're Motor not lounge. in the hallway. So those are usually. Good that was kind of a phenomenon of the 50s and 60s, weren't they? Motels. Motor lodges. Yeah. Yeah. So what about no. reserve parking? That is. Reserve parking. They have reserve parking. That is parking that, if needed, they could build to meet the requirements. Um, but they don't have to build it 
if they don't think they're going to need it, but they do have to allow for it. And that's what they've got there, I think, in the upper corner. So what that, they're what they're saying here is does that reduce the TDR? Or no. 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 Well, no. well, it does in a way. It, um, what, what it's counted towards the, they're using. In other words, they need X number of total parking space, the total parking area. So they're supporting, they're constructing some for what they need. They're using some space, so-called reserved. And between building what they need and the reserve, they have a little over uh, about three quarters of what they need. And the balance is being made up for the building size with TDR. So they're telling us two things. They don't need as much parking as the bylaw requires. And they will, there's a, a cap on how far you can reduce the parking in the TDR bylaw. So even when we get, even when we buy as much reduced parking as we can, we are still left with more parking area than we need. So we developed the reserve, con reserve parking concept to say you know, we, don't, we don't want you to pave more than you need. Uh, the original concept came up with somebody who wanted to put up a 40,000 square foot manufacturing facility that would have 10 workers. And 10 workers do not need two acres of parking. So that's where we came up with the concept of reserve parking. As long as you have it, you can just designate it, and um, the, you, whether you pave it or not is up to you. It's better uh, up to us if it's not pervious. It, it is, but the bylaws do specify how much coverage of a lot you can have. and The reserve parking does not count toward green space. So we it can is just out how much parking we can actually physically put on the site mm -hmm. and still retain the open space requirements of the building footprint, setbacks, etc. And then we figure out that's the maximum parking that would fit on there, and that's how we compute how much parking we theoretically could provide. We only build as much as we need. And if something happens, something happens that they need more parking spaces, we have the area to accommodate that and still be in compliance with zoning. Right. This, this gives us some flexibility. And it also gives us the ability to put some money in the kitty preservation of agricultural land. And it also gives us the flexibility if all of a sudden the site changes. A perfect example is Echelon. It used to be an auto parts store. It only needed a few parking places. Then it becomes a very popular restaurant. And that's where the rub is. Plus they added a little outdoor dining that was supposed to be summer only and uh, but nevertheless uh, when someone says you should say a restaurant needs this many of seats and this many it's difficult to plan for the future if something changes and right. things always change yeah. we've had a number of places as that you know we've yeah. had a number of places in town that were used to be one use now, I'm not talking about a retail store to a retail store. I'm talking about a retail store to a restaurant to vice versa, to a doctor's office, to anything in between. And the problem you get to both the town and the developer or tenant in that case is, well, i got a building that I want to use, but I don't have enough parking spaces. So where's he going to put the cars? To tell him he can't build or can't use that, you know, now you're putting the owner and the developer and everybody else at, at a thing, like in Amherst and Northampton, they discourage, or they tell you you don't need to put up a building with parking because they want you to use the, the, the parking garages. Well, the only problem with that is the parking garages don't have enough room in either type place for them. Right. That's another story entirely. And they're not necessarily located, you know, 100 feet or 100 yards from the front door. In some cases, they're a good hike. So the other part of this and why we can be comfortable in considering it is that it's a self-limiting problem. If they do not have adequate parking for their needs, um, they can't put it anywhere else. Um, you know, there's no parking on Route 9. So they basically have to make that calculation and be pretty sure about it because we don't have any municipal parking facilities. We don't have any other place to put their traffic. So everybody has to absorb their own. And uh, 
if they can tell us that they honestly do not need as much as the bylaw requires, then they've taken the avenue to work that out. How do you put one room per one car? What's the ratio? How do you figure that? Uh, I forget how many spots are there. I forget how many had, but we had more spaces than we did rooms. Correct. Yeah. And most of the parking is now in the front instead of in the back. Yeah. The uh, they, they, there's a, I think when it, we were here last time there was one point something per room. And then it was enough for employees and and basically certain well, employees, yeah, in general. I forgot. I think it was. I want to say there was like 15 employees or something. So. Roughly, yeah. Um, but history has shown this number of rooms and this number of parking spaces are adequate. And again, yeah. they have the ability to expand. If that should be, it's cheaper to build oh. it now. Oh yeah. So. I have another question. I don't know if it's the right timing, but what code, earthquake code, are you using for this design? We, we, we just mentioned that at the beginning, a lot of earthquakes. Well, the, the, the building will, this is just a preliminary. I mean, the structure and everything has to be designed. It has to meet. The, the, the structure has to meet building code. Yeah. So we don't get into we don't get into that. Oh. And, and okay. that would be applied for a building permit yeah. through the Hadley. Yeah. The, the build this this building will meet earthquake for a three story building that's forty nine feet high. Yeah, right. it's, its foundations will it's have good. reinforcing steel in it. The walls will have diaphragms that will you know. Yeah. Because it's gonna be able to shake and not fall down, bottom line. Up to, I forgot what what earthquake zone are we in? Do you remember? We're in two. We're in two? I was in North Hadley Hall and we had when we thought the furnace blew up, it was a Boy Scout meeting, and they found out it was an earthquake. Yeah. That that that, that, <laughs> that 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 building is that building is not earthquake resistant either. <laughs> yeah. And the other things that came up from the last meeting we had um, and I still haven't quite gotten clear on the how far you can drive those pylons into the ground due to the aquifer. That was something we said we were going to discuss. What? It, it was Foundation. mentioned at the meeting, and we couldn't discuss it last time we came because it wasn't a formal meeting. So we said we would carry it over we're, along with some other things. We don't for this propose meeting. to have pylons. It's just spread footing on a slab, slab on grade construction with spread footing. So you're not going. You're not going to. What's you know? Are you what are you going to encroach on under the ground? I guess it basically goes question. down to frost, four feet below yeah. grade level. Okay, because we're on an aquifer, and I, that was an issue that we talked about, and that's four feet is fine uh, over the aquifer? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Again, that's one of the reasons that um, the um, formal water design criteria from DP, they want to look at the aquifer, recharge into the aquifer, or cleaning the water before you put it back in the ground. So that's all taken into consideration in the drainage design. You were asking for a variance last time. So two and three feet separation, they're asking for a variance. So I just didn't, I had this noted because it wasn't clear and we didn't, I don't remember what that was about. Uh, Subsurface that. storm drainage. Oh, that, oh, that was between the, yeah, uh. Yeah, I'm just trying to go back to that. That, that was between the. the bottom of their system was required the to be system. three feet above groundwater. Yeah, that, right. Yeah. And they were designed two feet above groundwater. Right. It's a redevelopment project. Uh, right. I think we're making the situation better there. So we're improved it and as a part of redevelopment, I think, uh, yeah. We're making it. Yeah. What happens a period of time the road if they're not in compliance and the said better conditions are not better than S existing? S conditions? Say it again now. At a period down the road, yes. should this get approved, what happens if something is found not in compliance with lighting, with the aquifer, with with stormwater runoff, with a issue? Because you said you passed this along to the inspector after you're done. Right. Yep. You're, you're talking before. During construction, before it's done? After it's done. And you After find out something, that something was said here is, is wasn't followed. not followed efficiently. Typically, we require, during construction, various checks by engineers to verify that things are done by plan. And so does the building inspector. Obviously, things can get missed. Um, if something is found out, before the certificate of occupancy is issued, the CO isn't issued until the problem is corrected. If the problem is found 
after the CEO is issued, and let's say, let's say two years down the road we find something is wrong. Depending on what it is, it depends on what steps the zoning enforcement or building inspector can take to get them corrected. So to give you a, a flat-out answer, it's very difficult. Let's say there's a problem with drainage. Um, I'm not sure what it could be. It's not working properly. Well, how bad is it not working? Is it, first of all, I doubt nobody, none of you are going to get flooded because you're all upstream and across the wetlands from it. Say if it's impacting something on Route 9, well, then the state's going to come in and talk to Mr. Parmar and get it straightened out. And you're going to get the, probably get the town involved in other things. Um, lighting, if the lighting is spilling over, well, or, or any of the issues that were, yep. you know, yeah, it, 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 there's no straight answer to that, depending okay. on what the issue but, is. So, but let me, let me go back, just review how we got here. So first of all, we require that the plans be professionally prepared. Second, the plans go out for what's called peer review to another engineering company on behalf, who's working on behalf of the town. And their job is to look at everything that the applicant's engineer designed into the project and report back to us whether, in their opinion, the project will work as designed if installed as designed. So now we have two professional engineers, or landscape architect professional engineers, who have expressed an opinion that this will work. The third level of protection is we ask for a final sign-off by a, again, usually the peer reviewer, the consulting engineer on behalf of the town, that everything, in fact, was installed as designed. Who so, was the peer engineer on this project? Uh, Doucette Associates? No, it was uh, Hatchmont McDonald, which is a... Um, the only, we only use reviewing engineers that the planning board is familiar with and that we have a little proof list. They just can't use anybody. Okay. So, uh, so we get to that point. So if before the CO, Certificate of Occupancy, it, this really should have been looked at by at least, at, at least two separate engineers who have reached a consensus that um, the project, if installed as designed, will work as designed, and that the design meets the town criteria. Then there's the final inspection, and then uh, the question is, uh, you know, what happens later? Um, if it's, as Jim said, you know, something like the, uh, the big problem in Longmeadow is uh, the, the, the uh, bad concrete that they were getting from Connecticut. Um, something might have to be rebuilt. Um, in, in all the years on a planning board, I can only recount several, three issues that we've had. Two of them were lighting and one was drainage. The drainage plan had to do with where the Maple Farms is, across from the uh, back, of, back, of, uh, well, back of the Hampshire Mall, the those small farms there. Their drainage plan didn't work as designed. Everything that they had on paper and drawing said it should have worked. It didn't. They had, a, they had a detention pond in the front that wasn't working for whatever reason. And they went back to the town, got permission, tied into a town drainage structure, and was corrected. The other two issues that I can recall were Texas Roadhouse and Lowe's. After the buildings were constructed, Holy smokes, it was like driving by sunshine out there at 12 o'clock at night. Well, at 10 o'clock at night. The places were lit up like crazy. Lowe's, where they have their, if you would, the greenhouse area, had extremely bright lights that the people in, was it Algonquin? No. Yeah. Spruce Hill. Spruce Hill were complaining um, <clears throat> that it was too bright. And a couple of us took a drive by there. Yeah, it was. It was you're talking 1,000, 2,000 feet away, and it was very bright. Went back to Lowe's, told them they put up shields on their light, they corrected it, and the problem basically went away. Texas Roadhouse, when they, when they got approval, they had 
the whole top of the building was lit up like crazy. If you remember the first, probably, what, two months it was installed? Mm -hmm. And it was, you drive by Route 9, and the glare to Route 9, you almost didn't need your car lights. Mm -hmm. We asked Texas Roadhouse to cut it down, and they did. Yeah. The lighting is, is still lit up, but it's nowhere near like that. At least it's not uh, bothering you when you go by or for anybody in an area. So typically, if you, if you have a problem, sometimes they occur, I'm not going to deny that, go back with a reasonable sense to the, to the owner and explain to them, we have never had a problem getting the correction done with reasonable people as long as, yeah, they see it's a problem and okay, you know, what can we do? We suggest a few things and it, it, it typically has worked, okay? So, I mean, here's a little bit different because if everything is, you know, Lighting, we're very cognizant of lighting. We try to make sure everything is down lighting and lighting and, and roof lighting and whatever else it may be. And we've had very good luck with the lighting. Um, you know, they aren't the prettiest fixtures in the world. However, um, the lighting is down and not lighting up the sky and not lighting up the neighbor's yards, except sometimes they want it lit up. Like Randy probably won't complain if, his, if the back of his building is lit up because he's got a business right next to it. So it's actually good for him in some ways to have a little bit of light there, but there was, the lighting is minimal there. So, long answer. I'm sorry, but... Mm, thank you. Anything else? Yeah, I think, did we talk about the second fire hydrant? Is that in the new design? Yeah, what happened to the second fire, second fire hydrant thing? on the original design? Because it was originally supposed to have two, only got one on the original design. Things happen. Um, second one. I think one of the reasons why is because one of the buildings is not sprinklered currently. Oh, that's a violation. So both, both buildings it's not are. It's a violation if it was done before. <laughs> but it was approved, it was signed off on. That that, 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 that's a fire department. That's a fire department. But that's, that's, a, right. good, that's yeah. a good point. The, Bill. The, the fire department still has to review this design. They have only reviewed this design basically for the external driveways and turning radiuses. They will still need to get, once they get building design plans, the, fire, de the fire chief will go over these plans about fire hydrant, sprinkler, not sprinkled between, he, between them and the building inspector. They'll review all of that. Police chief will look at the plans as well for certain things, especially if there's security systems. Since that existing building was built, the state, actually the International building code or has gone to a uh, is it 7,500 square feet? If you have a building 7,500 square feet or larger, you have to put a sprinkler in, which caused a lot of heartache. But it came after the um, fire down in Rhode Island. The, uh, yeah, the yeah. 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 So, but you know, we have to have a sprinkler within a certain distance of what we call the fire department connection. So that's the issue. I mean, typically fire trucks don't fight off of fire, fire engines, they, uh, I mean, off of fire hydrants. But the young lady brings up a good point. Uh, we have been probably a little remiss, as well as the fire department, police department, in not looking at the drawings that we give them and giving their signature okay. Is there enough turning radius for the trucks, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to have to remind you and ourselves that we want a letter from the fire department so it won't happen after the fact. We, oh. we did sit with yep. Tim and um, Mike. Mike wasn't there, but I think it was Eric who was there. They went over these plans. Well, yep. they okay. should have well, a note back well, to us. No, that's no. not how the bylaw reads. That's not how no, the bylaw reads. We, we um, need to work on that. Some, uh, yeah. But we we've got to find out. So we're going to. If you want me to, I can. No. Still, I have no trouble meeting with that. No. What we're working on is um, we're revamping some of our boilerplate to make it clearer that there will be a uh, pre construction meeting with relevant boards and things like that. I know it's not an issue for you, but. It's like every other developer comes in and is what, when they're told what the sewer impact fee is going to be, they go ballistic and uh, we were never told about this. And the planning board okayed the project and we, we have language in there that says this is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, but apparently people don't read to the fourth page. So um, there will be... Like there's in that every room, right? So what happens is we have to give with the sprinkler company, approved, mass approved, they drop a narrative 
for the whole system, for the whole property, which then goes to the fire department for review. Until that is reviewed and properly signed off, we cannot open. We do not get a CO. Mike or someone from the fire department will come down about three or four times to inspect it, check every room, check every corner, check the exterior to make sure we are doing it by the narrative and by code. And he will not pass us, and he will not give us a CO unless he is satisfied. That is, and they can't even install it without a fire protection engineer stamping a, a, a drawing. And so they have to uphold the codes. So as you're learning, the uh, approval system is very fragmented. I've described it as a merry-go-round sometimes. It doesn't matter where you get on. But um, there are overlapping jurisdictions to some extent, uh, but the Conservation Commission is governed by one set of rules. The Planning Board is governed by another set of rules. Building Inspector by the Building Code. Fire Department by the Fire Code. Um, Board of Health, I'm sure, is involved here somewhere, and they have their own um, their own rules. So, e yeah, it's not a simple process. It's not one-step permitting. Um, on the one hand, you get a lot of chances to work things out. <clears throat> you get little details come out in one hearing that you can use in another, perhaps. Um, but it, it can be confusing. It can be confusing if you've been doing this for a, a long time. Um, as, as a general comment, a larger developer like Mr. Parmar and Mark are familiar with the system. They know what needs to be done because they've done it a couple of times. A smaller developer, you know, like a small developer that's, that's getting into it early on or for the first time, can easily get lost in all of this stuff and make mistakes and well unfortunately that's a fact I mean there's no easy way to say A, B, C, D even when you explain it to people you've got to do this or this or this they will still miss something I, I just at the risk of, of I don't want to be rude but I didn't have confidence in the set of plans we as, as customers so to speak as a as resident had to point out a lot of flaws in the first plan. I mean, it was the building heights was wrong, the, the system they were using for drainage was wrong. They were passing it. So that sent a, a lot of flags to me. And I deal in buildings and drawings every day. So I'm familiar with it. And that didn't give me a sense of comfort. Now, you've all reacted. You've all been very good at, at listening to us and taking that in and considering it. But so that confidence level that you're kind of leaning to, Absolutely not there on this one. You need, and, and you need, 20, you need 20 signatures to run for planning board, and I'll be the first one to sign your papers. I will, too. Okay, I will. Oh, uh, Mike, you missed part of the first hearing oh, on that's this. that's right, and I did, I did watch it. The, uh, so is the roof height of 49.55 acceptable? Yes. And you don't even want to see a picture of it chopped down before you make your decision. That is correct. We, we, I can visualize what it would look like. But can everybody visualize? Because you can sure doctor up a, a, a length of 75 feet to make it look good with a flat roof. A good architect can do that. Well, it's going to look... It's not going to be 75 feet. What's the, this roof is going to be longer than 75 feet. How, what's, the long, what's the length of the big building? You said a cupola every 75 feet. Oh, a cupola every 75 feet. My opinion is it would not look attractive from all angles. How about the other board members? Is, is that what all the board members say right now? I think that's what everyone said. We, we, we no. did go over that, and we did without, that without have a straw the drawing of what it would look like with a different style roof. You're agreeing to the higher roof as proposed. That is correct. We're I, talking about that scenario there. The peaked roof, yes. We're talking full, about fully. If peaked. we did the flat roof, Pick. is that what 
You're saying the well, gap. I'm the gap what a flat roof would look like. I mean, an architect can redesign a flat roof to look very decorative, with with uh, gable ends or some other design criteria incorporated into it. I think a flat roof on a residential it would have to be a modern, and I don't think that's what we're looking for here. Mod, you know, it's not a Frank Lloyd Wright look that we're looking so, for. You know, our our whole ordinances go towards a more colonial esque. Um, so what you actually put you, your finger on is a in, internal conflict in the zoning bylaw which says in the limited business or in the business district you can have three stories and in the um, village center overlay you have to have a peaked roof and each floor doesn't need a 10-foot ceiling I, I don't know what building code requires um, so it's um, We've learned something here, and that is a reason why we will be updating the bylaw. I think we will talk about that specifically as height means the highest point. But right now, we don't have anything in the bylaw we can point to to say that. Yeah. And they have the building code that they can point to to say, well, here's a definition of height in, in construction, which is but, what we're looking many at. Many three story buildings would meet the 42 foot with a peaked roof, if each floor didn't have a 10 or 12 foot ceiling, they're not cut it down to nine or 10. It's 10 foot floor to floor, which is 10 foot floor to floor. The space for mechanical ductwork. Okay. And then on the lower floor, we're at 13 foot six, floor to floor, first floor to second floor, because there are some higher ceilings, they're public spaces, and there's a pool, which requires, as you can imagine, significant HVAC, which translates into larger ducts. It's a very, very tight floor to floor. I would prefer to have more, but this is fitting all the requirements, getting a three-story three building. You could not build this with less than 10 foot floor to floor. A good HVAC guy could. I disagree with you. Okay. I've been doing this for 35 years. Okay, me too. Okay, so we have a difference of opinion. Okay. Other comments, questions? Entertain some motions, Mr. Dwyer? Uh, sure. Uh, do we have uh, erosion and sediment control in this one, too? Yes. Okay. Let's see, this is TDR. Yeah, first one was erosion and sediment control. Okay. TDR. So I'll make a motion to approve the application for site plan approval and to approve the application for aquifer protection and transfer of development rights based upon the following findings. The project satisfies the general purposes of the site plan approval bylaw and the village center overlay district. The project is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the TDR and aquifer protection. The project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood, replacing one hotel with a smaller one. Um, 
the uses are not prohibited by the terms of the bylaw and are permitted thereby. Um, what is the final, what's the review date of the? The last review date is um, June 13th, 2019. That's the one with the building pulled in. Pardon? That's the one with the building tucked forward a little bit. Correct. And okay. Three on the driveway. And do you have? Did you give us a set of those, or do you have a set for us? Does not include the building elevations. That's okay. There's all the other aspects. Okay. So work will be conducted uh, in accordance with the plans revised uh, June 13, 2019. I don't believe there any waivers were requested. Um, copies of the site plan approval have been distributed. Proposal as amended satisfies the site plan review criteria. Planning Board places the following conditions. <clears throat> design features are considered an integral part of the approved design. <clears throat> Any deviation from the plans as presented to and approved will be considered a violation. The proposal is for the following uses only, and use of the site for any others are prohibited, and that will be limited to Town Place Suites by Marriott. Where's the nearest town place suites? You know? Del, I think it's down in Brown Park. What's around the one there. by the airport? That's a Marriott. Yeah, I think there's one around at Bradley. There's, yeah. one, there's a residence in there, but there's also a residence in there. There's a Marriott right up the road on, uh, was it 75? Oh, well, that, that, there's a Marriott something there. I think there's a town place around there. So, okay. was there? Yeah. There was not signed detail in here. That's. No. No. Okay. All right. No sign detail has been provided. Um, all signage proposed uh, must comply with the zoning bylaw without variance and also be approved by the planning board before installation. Landscaping must be installed, maintained, and replaced per the plans. Uh, any outdoor lighting fixture shall be shielded so it does not produce strong direct light beyond the property boundaries. Uh, no storage containers, uh, trailers, shipping containers, temporary or per permanent storage structure, or any other storage facility not depicted on the approved site plans are allowed. This approval is limited to zoning issues. and is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including but not limited to the Conservation Commission, Hadley Sewer Commission, Hadley Water Commissioners, state agencies, including the Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act unit. Any changes directed by other boards must be approved by the Planning Board. One set of the approved plans will be maintained on site during construction for the exclusive use of the Zoning Enforcement Officer. The project will be reviewed for compliance by an independent consultant on behalf of the Planning Board. Uh, you will participate in a pre-construction meeting with relevant town departments. Uh, site plan approval uh, shall uh, not become effective until the notice of decision is affixed to the original site plan. The applicant's engineer certifies the conditions set forth are noted and incorporated in the site plan, and the original is signed by the planning board chair or clerk. Um, And um, so the special permit is granted to Town Place Suites by Marriott to operate in the aquifer district. As required by the bylaw, the plan shows the following. Drainage recharge features, provisions to control soil erosion, provisions to prevent soil compaction, provision to prevent seepage from sewer pipes. Uh, provision to prevent contamination of groundwater by petroleum products or hazardous chemicals. Uh, because the site is located in the Aquifer Protection District, the approval is specific to each occupant. Um, this is, approval is as to town, town place only. 
farmland preservation. The purposes of this bylaw are met by payment into a fund which will, be permanent, which will permanently protect farmland and agricultural soils, fostering compact commercial development in a central area served by public uh, infrastructure. The project is in the receiving district to be eligible for transfer of development rights, a special permit um, from the planning board is required. The planning board hereby uh, grants a special permit for a decreased parking area in accordance with uh, that bylaw. Applicant proposes to make a cash contribution to the town of Hadley for the purposes of pur purchasing agricultural uh, preservation restrictions. The payment required um, 7.28 times 99.78 acres times 9.978 acre. I'll do the math later. Yeah. Um, and that is the motion for site plan approval. Uh, and for um, TDR. transfer development rights and for business use in the Aqua for Protection District. Do we have a second? I'll second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Erosion and sediment. Yep. TDS. This is just a permit, not a special permit, and I'll make a motion to approve your application under Section uh, 24 of the Hadley Zoning Bylaw for an erosion and sediment control for stormwater management permit based upon the following findings, and all is confirmed by the Hatchmont McDonald. Yes. Hatch Mott, now I think it is. Uh, the provisions of the erosion and sediment control for stormwater management bylaw are applicable to this provision. This project is not exempt from the provisions. The proposed site work is consistent with the bylaw. The proposed site work satisfies the performance standards um, except separation. Uh, two feet versus three. And uh, the proposed site work meets the design standards of the bylaw. Inspections of site work will be conducted as provided in the erosion and sediment control bylaw. That is the motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Good luck. Yes. Well, yeah. I'll get this filed within a probably within a week. And the uh, board does not need mylars anymore. Paper copies. No, paper copies are fine. The mylars only if you think you need to record something at the registry. We have a copy of the. We have a copy of that one, right? The uh, architectural. We know they have a flat roof, but it's not permitted in the overlay zone. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Seriously. Ron, it's a lot of fun. Two for one game. You got some good you got some good insights you clearly got interesting yeah. stuff. Mark. Thank you. An electronic copy of that is fine. We don't need a paper copy of that one. Give it, okay. Just give us an electronic copy of, of that. Just electronic, electronic copy? Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 It doesn't matter who it comes from. Matter. As long as we get it. Usually Mark is updating you guys. Okay. So is there, just go to your Hadley MA. Yeah. 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 Okay. I apologize if I can test you. Thank you. Um, let's see. General information. 
The zoning bylaws that we adopted at the annual town meeting in May have been approved by the Attorney General. Jessica is publishing them appropriately, and they will take effect after that is done. One quick question, Jim. Somebody was asking me uh, if a medical marijuana, I mean a recreational marijuana dispensary can be located next to a residential, a house. The medical marijuana prevents it from being located near a house. 300 feet. Yes. Same thing with rec... rec with same thing with adult. Yes. I think it's 300 feet. It's either 300 or 500 for, for okay. sale. Well, I forgot exactly in a bylaw, but it's three or 500 for, for sale. I have to go with the number. Is. It's 300 for growing. I think sale... No, for sale. That's what yes, I'm sale is either three or 500 feet. Yep. But only in the business district or the industrial district. So, so that's the only place you can sell adult is yeah. in a, is So in it, it that's, makes it tough. There are quite a few houses oh, yeah. in this section. Of yeah. Yeah. Basically, the only place you're going to see it is at the other end of Route 9. Yeah. The, the Emerson, the, the yeah. medical place probably applying for adult, because that's already adult THC. Yeah. And I mean, the nearest house over there... Until you get down to lows, there is no houses. Yeah, somebody was asking about the the pride station that land is available for lease. Across there. the street, yeah. there's houses. They can't. They won't be busy. They can't build it there. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you go to the very far back corner. If that's over 300 from a house, um, that's possible. But you can't have the parking. The parking. It's, it's a whole plot. You can't, have, the, you can't have the building in the back and have the parking in the front and say that it's. Well, the, 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 I believe it has to be the after see the wording of the bylaw, but I believe the parcel has to be three hundred feet. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's see, the uh, the land court has finally or the uh, court has dismissed the case against the planning board in Amherst and Hadley. When the appeal was uh, Amherst Motel, Amherst Motel, on the parking area, so that 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 case has been dismissed. I thought I had something else. Lesko's Garage. Uh, that Lesko's Garage is under appeal. But, I, but they're building. They can proceed at their own risk. If if the uh, person that is a grieving. If the aggrieved party re goes after them with a cease and desist, I guess they, they, they could do that. I don't know. I don't, I don't, know, what to, I don't know how, the, how that works, but that's up to their attorneys. And, uh, yeah, right? the, I, I, Joel Bard reminded me that the way I have worded the decision says that you're not supposed to proceed until the appeal's been resolved, but the state law has been changed. So if they want to proceed, they... That's a business decision. Yeah. The, uh, I, so through the grapevine, I understand that they intend to go, uh, that the person, company being sued, Exotic Auto, whatever the, how, however the word of it is, that they intend to defend their end of the suit. We'll have to wait and see. So, um, isn't the, isn't the state going to condemn the current? Yes. Garage. The uh, I had I, I asked for um, I asked Mass Highway if they would provide me with a set of the technical drawings. Oh, okay. And they did. I have that. Oh, you do. Hard copies or uh, I just have a I had a, a very big download. Um, oh, cool. I will either link you to the Dropbox okay. or uh, I'll see if I can send what I've I've downloaded it already. I I, I don't know, I don't know if it's too big to send by email. Um, but um, yes, I did confirm that the plans at this time show that uh, they will be taking the full value of the parcel. And that's apparently the only one they're taking in full. Right. Um, Which parcel is this? Exotic Auto. Exotic Auto. In the drawing that we went to at the Hopkins Academy, there was an X to Exotic Auto which said to be demolished. That's all I remember. Uh -huh. 
Okay. Which makes the North there was, they, property they, even more I mean, they, they gave him, he, between the, the edge of the sidewalk and his front door was about, I don't know, four or five feet. And just no way you're going to be able to drive into his two overhead doors. Right. The only parking he had was uh, stuff on the east side of the building. And, you know, that I'm just repeating what the drawing showed. So all I can I'll say really is you know, there have been no takings yet. So yeah. it's just marked as yeah. to be yeah. taken. Yeah, and this is a 25% review subject to change. Yeah. He's got a pretty good lawyer defending him. Well, I mean, whether or not they take it, that means the lawyer may simply get him more yeah. money, too. Well. You know, that's, again, that's, uh, that's out of our hands. That's the state. And I have nothing else. I just have two things. Um, would we like to think about starting the meetings earlier? 6.30? For the reason? Uh, well, that's what Select Board is doing now. And I'm not opposed, but just, just, just why? Um, yeah, maybe 10 o'clock it, now. Yeah, it's, yeah it, when we have a, a long night, it can... Yeah. It could go deeper I, into I, the night. I have no problem with that at all. I mean, I get out of my office and I got this window, and what am I going to do? I, mean, I, I don't have a problem with 630 as long as we, we agree to it. That's yeah. fine. Okay. Um, I don't think, uh, uh, you know, I, it may well require, uh, maybe we should make a motion, but it wasn't on the agenda. So I'll, uh, I'll add that to the agenda okay. for a future meeting. Okay. And um, I, will not, I will not be at the August 6th meeting. And it looks like we have nothing on for the August 20th. Correct. PVPC is only on for that one to talk about. I believe Ken will be here to talk about definitions. Are, that, are they coming to the first one? Uh, they're, they're scheduled for the for. I think. <coughs> yeah, I just, I yes, just. Yes, PV, PVPC is right now is set for August 6th. Okay. Yeah, I had I had put them in there just because if, that, that's where we usually put them, but I didn't know if, if it was. If we have nothing for the 20th, um, I'll, I can contact Ken and ask him if he can make the 20th instead. Okay. Okay. Uh, is 20th good for everyone? What, are you going to be here on the 20th? Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can start beginning... Well, you can make a decision either on the sixth or the twentieth. But by the by the twentieth, we can start it by we'll be can be starting our meetings at six thirty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or do you want to do it to start on the sixth, first of the month? Uh, why don't we vote on it on the sixth? Okay, I won't be here, but so that's fine. I'll put it on the agenda yeah. for action on the sixth. Okay. Oh, this, that's I see. I see. This okay. sort of comes under the heading of future discussion uh, topics. I got you. Right. Okay. So or planning board procedures, but. Okay. Uh, so you'll vote on it without me. You don't. You don't. You don't. Yeah, only need a majority anyway. Right. Okay. I think it probably, yeah, given the walk-in volume, which took almost an hour. Right. Um, I'm thinking maybe we do want to. We we can give, PVPC the option of the sixth or the twentieth, but I think we should still plan on, doing, the sixth and the twentieth. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just to um, be here. For public, hearings. Yeah, we have no hearing scheduled. No, no, no. For but future public hearings, we want to still schedule them at 7.15? Uh, we might move them up to 7. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah, I suppose we can move it up to 7 and then... Um, Let's we'll see how that works. If we got to go to... If we, can, if we yep. can go early for it, it works out. But, I mean, that... that usually most comments, if they're lasting about, about a half an hour. In general, yeah. Once in a great while, they're not. So I used to have it from seven to seven thirty be uh, the walk-in office hours, and everything started at seven thirty. The hearing started at seven thirty, and then we when a, the economy was a little sluggish, uh, we didn't have as many people coming in. Right. So we were, had to had to do some song and dance routine to fill because right. you can't start early you can't start early right. we advertised it so we had to start at 7 30. Yeah. Um, so it's if we continue right here it's a little 15 yeah. minutes or you 20 know. minutes or something yeah so 
Weekends, weekend trials go six thirty and seven for the public hearing. See how that works, and we can always adjust. Or six forty-five even. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, let's play with it a little bit. Okay. Um, since we don't have any hearing scheduled. Um, yeah, nothing's coming up for. So yeah, the course. earliest something could come in for would be um, September third. Right. If it was filed on the sixth. We don't even know of anybody filing anything. We haven't. I mean, nobody's notified. Like the Randy or anybody said, we're going to have something come. In. Mark doesn't hasn't said of anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Six thirty. Okay with with you, John. Six thirty. Yes. <clears throat> you change it forever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We just we we're just so impressed by how well the select board does that we're going <laughs> we're going to jump on their bandwagon. Okay. I have nothing else. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in so favor? Moved. Aye. All right. Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. Mm -hmm.